channel according to cat if you are new here please introduce yourself in the comments below if you're returning just say hi and what are we making today well today we are making more home decor pieces on a budget using dollar tree and other really affordable products if you'd like to know what supplies i've used just check out the description box and with all that being said let's get right into the video so today's video is my top 30 favorite Christmas DIYs. It's a little early in the season, but I have been in the holiday spirit. So grab your favorite drink and get ready. Here we go. First thing I did was I took these three blocks, but you can also use the blocks from the Dollar Tree or that wooden piece that you can cut up with easily with a handsaw. And I'm taking some Waverly chalk paint in lacquer, which is a really nice red. However, for this product, it wasn't exactly what I was looking for. I wanted it a deeper, um, muddier red. So after I give it a really good coat of the red, I went back with my Waverly antique wax and I basically dry brushed it, but I dry brushed it pretty good. Um, usually when I dry brush, I don't have much on my paintbrush, but this time I did. I just wanted that really rustic look, which I think I got. So I just went right around all the sides. Even if I wasn't sure if it was going to be covered or not, I just went back and made sure I got everything just in case you saw it. All right, so now I'm taking one of these Dollar Tree floor mats for a car and I'm going to use it as if it's leather. So I'm just cutting out a piece here and this is going to be my belt. I am going to cut one long strip and use the back of it. Do you see those nubs? Those rows of grippers really made it easy for me to keep it straight, but still I wanted it even straighter. So I took my craft knife and my Dollar Tree square and I just went along just to make sure it was super straight. Now the side that's going to be the front, you want it all flat. So I'm pressing that against the table. So right now it's upside down and that's the front. So you want the front to be completely straight across and the back can be jaggedy. All right, so now I'm taking this belt. This belt was from the Dollar Zone which was actually a dollar, but I know a lot of you don't have that in your area. What you could do is take the Dollar Tree baking pans, that fake metal, and well, I guess it's really metal. It's just tin, a very thin tin. You could cut that into a square and then cut out the center square and use that as your buckle. Um, right now I'm wrapping it around. It fits perfectly. These blocks I got from Hobby Lobby in a pack, like a wooden block set, and you got, I don't know, like 10 of them, all different sizes and shapes. So that's where I got these and they were super affordable. Uh, definitely definitely less than the, the Dollar Tree blocks, but you can also get them from the Dollar Tree. So now I'm just taking some hot glue and just putting it right around just so that the belt stays in place. You don't need a lot of it, but at this point I'm gonna have to, that's the pan I was talking about, something like that. Okay, so I know that hot glue will not hold that buckle on, so I'm using my Gorilla Glue Super Glue Gel, and I'm just putting a little bit on the top and bottom of that. I did pull the leather belt, faux leather belt, back up because I wanted the buckle to adhere to the actual belt part. So that's why I pulled that up just so that's what I was hot gluing it to. And now I'm going to go back and hot glue that part of the belt down. And just to make sure it stays because hot glue is, comes up easily. We know that I put a little bit of that super glue, Gorilla Glue gel right there on the faux leather. So now I take my Cricut Joy and I make a decal that says, ho, 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 cut those apart to put on each individual block. If you don't have a Cricut, you can use Dollar Tree stickers or paint markers. There's so many other options. So you could easily do that as well. And this is it. I hope you like it as much as I do. Angels we have heard on high, sweetly singing all the plains. And the mountains in reply Echoing their joyous strings Gloria In excelsis Deo Gloria In excelsis Deo This 
burlap banner from Dollar Tree and I'm just taking out one of those burlap pieces and at first I was going to use the front of this Dollar Tree stencil set which was about the that one. It's the most wonderful time of the year, but it did not fit. So I decided to use this wreath that was on the other side. And these stencils are really great and totally reusable because they're really thick plastic. So I'm just taking my Craft Smart green paint, just green paint I got online in a huge set, really affordable, just to have some other colors on hand when my Waverly chalk paint runs out. So I am just going right around and stippling on that green paint. and just make sure you go straight up and down so you don't get underneath. So right now I'm just taking some red lacquer from Waverly Chalk Paint and I am stippling on that bow. And that's it, super easy. And I'm pulling this off and no bleed through, love it. So I know that I want atta to attach this to my sack. So I'm gonna put that aside while it's drying and I'm gonna use this Dollar Tree scarf as my sack. So I'm just folding it in half. I don't cut anything yet because I'm not quite sure how long I want it. So I'm just hot gluing right up the edges. I am just going to do little sections at a time so that my hot glue doesn't dry and I'm not missing any spots and I just smooth it out with my hands as I go up. I just go to where I feel it's a good place to stop and I can fold it over and then I just flip this whole thing over and I do the same thing to the other side. I just go slow and again, little sections at a time. Now I'm going to cut it where I think is a good place and I love that there's stripes on it so that I can make a very nice straight cut. Fold it inside out and make sure you get your corners out as well. Now I'm gonna look around the edges and right here I found a little hole, put a dab of hot glue and I think that was the only little hole I found. So it worked out pretty well. Now I'm going to take the top of it and fold it down three times. You could do two times, but I liked three and I'm cinching it just to see what it would look like and I think it's a good size. I'm only tacking it on the front back and then the two sides and that's just to hold it in place. Just a little dab of hot glue. And now I'm going to take that banner piece and I'm cutting off the bottom so it's in the shape of a square and I'm cutting, pulling off any of those strings to make it look nice and frayed. Now I take this ribbon that was from burlapfabric.com. It's just like a burlap ribbon and I'm going to put it right at the top to make it look, I don't know, like an edging up there. So now I take three more brads and I am going to just put it right through the burlap fabric and bend it back in, in behind, in behind, behind the burlap piece. And I go right across the top. And I think that just looks so cute. I don't know why, but I just love it. I use brads a couple times in this video. I love using brads when I craft. Now I'm taking some Dollar Tree Mod Podge in matte and I'm going right around the edges and just, you can see what I'm doing. I'm making sure it doesn't fray more than it already did because I like it frayed, but not too frayed. So there you go, I'll wait for that to dry. Now I'm taking a piece of scrap paper, putting it inside so that when I hot glue this, nothing goes through to the other side and then you know how you can't open it, that won't be good. So I put a little bit right at the top and press that down and then I'll go along each of the sides and just put a dab of hot glue so that it stays in place. I didn't want it that, the like piece was completely glued down. I wanted it to look like, I don't know, that it was kind of tacked down in places. So I just kind of put some glue here and there. Now I'm stuffing it with whatever I have around, the leftover scarf I actually put in there. And this is some stuffing I had left over from a pillow I was no longer using. And I'm just making sure I get it all down in those corners and I just keep going till it's nice and full. Now I'm taking this Dollar Tree rope and I'm going to tie that right around the top of the sack. I'm going to put a simple knot in it and tie up the ends and that's it. I just loved how this looked. It was so simple and yeah, I just love it. And you can see here I'm making my knot and now I will make my end knot on this piece of rope that's hanging down. 
and then cutting off any excess. Okay, so at this point I thought I was going to be done and then I'm like, no, it still needs something. So I went to get one of my dollar, see I thought it was done. And then I went to get one of my Dollar Tree, um, what are these called? Ornament, like wooden ornament packs. And this says Mary and there's like a little like deer head, <laughs> deer head in it. And I am taking my Waverly chalk paint, no, not chalk paint, my Waverly antique wax and I'm just going right over that deer head and then I go across the back and then I'm just taking a toilet, uh, toilet paper, it wasn't toilet paper, I promise. It was a wipe. It was a wipe and just wiping off any excess. Now I'm taking my Waverly chalk paint in white and I'm giving the rest of this a good coat. So just the front, I keep the back stained and I'm going over the M-E-R-R. -R. Then I realized it was way too stark white against the burlap, not burlap, the... <laughs> So this is a nightmare at this voiceover. So now I take my dry brush of the Waverly Antique Wax and I go over any of those areas that are really white and I make it look aged. And I love the way that looked. Now I'm taking a piece of twine from the Dollar Tree and taking off any of that fuzz and I'm going to just loop this right around where the rope is. I make a knot at the bottom and then I will just hot glue that right to the end of my wooden ornament piece. And I just let it hang just like that. And then I knew it needed something else. So I took a Dollar Tree pick and I just cut off a piece of greenery and I'm just tucking it right under that rope. So I wanted to bring out the red that's in the bow on the wreath. So I take a piece of red berries that were on that pick from Dollar Tree and I just glue a little bit right there on the greenery. And this is it. I hope you like it as much as I do. Hold up, I am on my way, I'm in motion Let's go to the ocean Yeah, let's go outside We can hang out on the beach without freezing Yeah, isn't that amazing? In Christmas times We'll be chilling and happy been a good good time doesn't matter if the snow is falling or the windows in the rain is pouring it will I took these decorative bells from the Dollar Tree you get nine in the pack but I am only using five of them and that's all I had of the gold ones but I was really too shiny for me so I am taking gold but it is from folk art it is their metallic gold and I'm going around and splotching on some of that gold paint just to tone it down a bit and you can see <laughs> you can see the difference right here now don't worry they will get much darker so I'm going in with my apple barrel burnt umber and this will act as if it's rust. And I'm going to take my same Dollar Tree sponge and just sponge it right around, aiming toward like the edges of the bell where it's sticking out. But I keep layering up that burnt umber and you can see where I am focusing a lot at that edging. Now I'm going back to that car mat and this is going to be the leather strap. So again, I realized at this point it is too thick and I'm going up using the back of it to help measure out or not measure out, keep my line straight. I take my craft knife for any edges that I felt weren't straight enough and I go run it right along and it just peels right off super fast, super easy. So now I'm taking a little piece here and I'm going to make that the part of the strap that folds over the wooden ring. Now you can use the Dollar Tree shower rings for this and I do like using those and you can make them look like wood. I'll leave a video below where I made one look like wood, but I couldn't find them. So I had this wooden ring and that's what I'm gonna use as the ring for the bell strap. So you can see how I'm going to lay that over. I didn't wanna jeopardize any of that, the length of the 
strap. So that's why I made a separate piece because I didn't want to fold over and then make my strap shorter. So you can see I'm kind of lining it up. I'm going to use my super glue gel again, my Gorilla Glue super glue gel again, just because I know that will hold in place for a long time. So at this point, I know I need a little shorter to wrap over and it doesn't get too bulky. And I am going to put the hot glue right here and pull it through and then hot glue that front piece to the back piece. And make sure you hold it there a second so that it gives it a chance to dry and it just doesn't pull apart. And that's it for that part. Now, I wish I would have stained the ring before I did this, but I will show you I do stain it after and I wanted it to look more aged. So now I'm going to take another small piece of that mat and I'm going to make it come down a little bit further. And the reason being is I wanna use those brads again to look like it's riveted. And I'm just going to match up those two lines that are already engraved in the mat. And you can see that right there in the top. And I'm going to use that same Gorilla Glue Super Glue and put that right on there. And this will allow me to have an area to put those brads. So I'm cutting off the back of them. And there's one, and then I will use the next one. And I'm going to use that same glue to make sure they stay down. Yeah, don't, don't put the glue on the brad and then put it on because I had glue all over my fingers. And you know I can't stand that. Oh, it drives me crazy. So learn from my mistakes, put the glue right there, put a dot of it right on the faux leather, and then put the brad right on top. Now I'm going to get my bells lined up to see how much space I'll need between each of the five bells. So I'm gonna use my Dollar Tree Square and that's just gonna help, help me with my spacing, that's all. I'm using the same Gorilla Glue Super Glue. And you can see I'm just holding it there until I feel that it adheres. And I'm using that as my spacer. Putting the next little pile of glue. I'm running out, I need to make sure I go and get more. Especially for metal pieces that this is really the only glue that works for me in a quick time period other than you know the fix all and the e6000 but those take a while but when you're making videos you want to be able to move along quickly so this is a really good glue for that i just wish it came in like a big bottle and maybe it does maybe i just bought little bottles i don't know okay and this is my last one and it fit perfectly just holding that in place. Now I'm going to notch the end of it so that, I don't know, so it doesn't look just squared off. And that's all I did there. And then I realized I did not like the raw wood. I don't know what made me think I would like the raw wood with this, but I left it raw. But it was okay because the antique wax wiped right off of that floor mat, like super easy. So I am going all around it, back, front, sides, and I even stuck my paintbrush as far in as I could to any of those areas like where the belt meets up with it. And I go right over those brads as well to make those not look as shiny. And I'm wiping off any excess. And that's it. I hope you like this as much as I do. It's cold outside, but the fire keeps us warm. We can spend the night underneath the mistletoe. And I've gotten you a present that I put under the tree. Tomorrow it is Christmas. Everything will be okay. Cause all I want is spend.
So I first, the first thing I do is I take this beware sign from the Dollar Tree and I want to cover up the back, but I don't want to spend time, you know, sanding it down, getting all the glitter off. But I like my pieces to look finished, so I'm taking some regular construction paper and I am measuring it out by tracing it around, cutting out those notches, and then I make a piece for the top as well because it wasn't long enough. And then all I'm going to do is take some spray adhesive and glue that down to the back. And this spray adhesive from Elmer's is super good. Like it, whatever, it stays, believe me. And if you get it on your fingers, it, doesn't come off either <laughs> and then I just put the top portion on and wherever those met up and had a little area there I needed to respray I put it right there perfect now I have a nice clean surface here so I'm taking my Waverly chalk paint and ink which is a very jet black and I'm going right over this sign now I didn't want it to look super opaque black I didn't want that look so my first thought was I was going to distress it and that didn't work out so I kind of went back over it with the black then I took my Dollar Tree sanding sponge and I thought I'm gonna sand it and I didn't like that look either so now I'm just wiping it clean with a wipe as I was wiping it clean with the wipe I noticed that it was taking up some of the paint and I loved the way it looked, so I just kept going with it. And then you can see I'm focusing on the edges, and I just loved how that looked. It's exactly what I was looking for, like really light black. That's what I wanted. So wherever those fake lines are going to be, that's where I'm running along with my pencil. And all I'm gonna do is just get it ready to take this tiny little screwdriver, whatever you have that sharp you can use, I'm going to make grooves to make it look like they are individual pieces. And because of it being divoted in like that, it looks pretty realistic and I like the look of it. So I went along all of those lines I made. And I go back to the beginning and smooth that out a little bit. And then you can see I did all three lines and made four slats. So now I'm taking this piece of cardboard that I have and I'm using my Dollar Tree square and a craft knife and I am cutting out little houses. If you saw my last video where I used Dollar General like cottages that I got, a lot of you said you could not find them in the store and you were disappointed because you loved the sign so much. So I thought I'm gonna make a sign similar that you could also just use cardboard to make that those little cottage houses. Decorating with those cottage houses has been all the rage and I'm on board because I love the way they look. So you can see I'm just lining them up to see how many I needed and then I can gauge the size of the last house. Now I'm taking my paint marker and I am making windows and doors on all of those little cottages. But just so you know, I did go back and do it twice because the paint kind of soaks right in to the cardboard and I wanted them to look really white, opaque, so that's why I went back over them. So I'm going to just finish these houses up and then I'm going to start getting ready to write on my sign. I'm gonna write Silent Night and you can see I'm just making my lines to make sure it's straight. I will be using my paint marker and I will do the thin upstroke and thick downstroke. You've seen me do this before and it's super easy. And as you're watching me do this, you really don't need to hear my voiceover. So I thought I would play one of my favorite Christmas songs, Oh Holy Night, and you can listen to it as you watch me write on my sign.
my goodness, I just love that song so, so much. And it makes me cry every time I hear it. And I'm sitting here editing this video and I am tearing up because it's just so beyond beautiful. And you can see what I'm doing right here. I'm just taking those four houses and hot gluing them onto a pops popsicle stick and then gluing that stick to the board. And I was gonna leave it just like this and thank goodness I glued it to that because then I realized it is way too small down there. And you will see in a bit that I add another layer of houses in the back. So I'm taking this piece of twine. I'm showing you the difference here between the burned and unburned section. Oh, that's a huge difference. And I am burning all the fuzz off and I'm just gonna wrap it around the top of the sign. I will knot it right in the front and then cut off any excess of that twine. And now I'm going to take some more twine and these little snowflakes. They are from the Dollar Tree and they are like glittery white snowflakes. And then tied the twine from the snowflakes right to the twine that is on the top of the sign. I'll burn off any excess. And when I tied them on, I just made sure they were at varying lengths just to give it some interest and that all of the snowflakes won't hit into each other. Just cut off any excess that's hanging from the top. And then I just finish off the last one. The, now I did get this idea from a piece I saw on Pinterest. It didn't have snowflakes, it had stars, it didn't have any words on it. And the houses at the bottom were painted on like black. So it was just an inspiration and I loved it. And I thought I can make something similar, but not similar. So that's where I got this idea. Now I realized I wanted some height at the bottom. So I just made a couple extra houses and I'm tucking it right behind the houses that are there. So thank goodness I put those on a popsicle stick and they were sticking out a little bit the front row. So the first one I glued on, I shouldn't have because I had to put the windows on, but the other two I didn't yet, so those will be easier. And that is it. I absolutely love how this turned out. I hope you like this as much as I do. was I took these ornaments. One I got from Dollar Tree, this one, and the one in the back I got from Dollar General. And they both look like tags. And I wanted two different sizes. So I'm taking off the stickers and you can see I was struggling a bit. I know I should have used a heat source, but I just thought I was going to pick it off and <laughs> that didn't work very well. So I decided to take my Goo Gone and try to take off some of that adhesive that was still stuck on the tags. Then I take my Dollar Tree scraper and I'm still working away at, <laughs> at this paper on these tags. And then I even take my sandpaper. Again, it would have been easier just to go get some heating device like a heat gun or a hair dryer or something but instead I didn't. So right here I made a little concoction of paint. It had a tiny bit of Waverly wax, a little bit of water, some Waverly chalk paint in mineral and some in elephant. So I made that mix for a previous project and I had a lot left over and I didn't wanna waste it. So I used it on the back, but you can see I just took the plain Waverly chalk paint in elephant and I put it on the front, what I was going to be using my decals on. Then I just took some of this mixture and I'm just kind of going over the top of it. Now I love playing with paint and getting different colors because I feel like it doesn't look as flat then. And you can see here how it has almost striations in it and just depth. And that's what I like. So I kind of always do that. I just kind of go over with different colors and 
whatever I have around I use. I just didn't want to waste all of that that I had in that bowl. Next I take these decals I made on my Cricut, but you can see here some other options are using these stickers from the Target dollar spot or just some stencils, something like that. There are so many options you can handwrite it, but I have a Cricut so I wanted to use it and I just wrote out Winter Wonderland and I got some white trees and that's what I'm going to put on these tags. So. I realized that the winter wonderland in the black wouldn't show up on the gr dark gray so I decided to take some Waverly chalk paint in white and lighten that up a little bit and then I gave it more of a farmhouse look by like distressing it so the first thing I did was I took the trees off and I'm going to put it at the bottom of the smaller tag I'm just gonna make sure that is down really well and then I'm gonna take my weeding tool and pull back the transfer tape just to make sure it's on there really good and then this will be ready to go sometimes when there's like little pieces um, on a decal it's harder to pull back but this did really well and I'm just folding over any edges that were a little long. Now I'm taking the bigger tag and this is where I'm going to put Winter Wonderland. And I'm gonna put the, it going uh, vertical rather than horizontal. And I'm gonna do the same exact thing, just make sure I am pressing that into the transfer tape and then transferring it right over to the tag. Make sure it's straight and I will kind of play with it a little bit here. And you can see here, I was just sanding away some of the edges just to distress them a bit. And now I am going to take a baby wipe. I love to keep baby wipes in my crafting area because I use them for so many things. And I'm just wiping off any excess um, grit from the sandpaper. Now what I'm going to do is take this twine and I'm gonna put it through each of those tags. So. Then I'm gonna just tie little knots. You're gonna see what I do here. I use my hot glue gun just to put on the tip just so I can get it through that little hole and that helps out a lot. And then I'm gonna make two knots on each of the twine pieces and I will do one knot where the tag meets up with the twine and another one right at the top of the twine. Then I want to kind of put those together so I'm going to place the smaller tag at a diagonal in the back and I'm gonna hot glue that in place. Again, you can use any size tags that you have and I think it would look super cute with any size that you have around. And then this is pretty much done. I hope you like this as much as I do. did was I took this Dollar Tree vase and some rubbing alcohol and I'm just going to give this a good clean. Now if this has any finger oils on it, your paint really isn't going to stick that well so make sure you clean it really well. So again I'm using that same concoction but I added a little more elephant this time. Just play around with your colors. It's basically a dark gray with a little khaki inside. Now I'm going to take my white paint pen. I got this from Walmart. A while back and I am just making little V's on it. I wanted it to look kind of like a sweater and at first I thought I wanted it spaced apart. So the V's are going up in one direction then they go down in the other direction but then I ended up putting it all closer together and I liked it much better like this. And I just thought it gave it a really fun element. Now I'm taking a piece of a <laughs> wooden tree that I got from the Dollar Tree where I cut the bottom off. I keep everything, I know. It's a bit of a problem. It's kind of like hoarding, kind of. So I just cut it into the shape of a tag and I'm using this little 
um, screwdriver to poke a hole in it so I can make it like a tag, like put twine through it. So now I'm taking my Waverly chalk paint in white and I'm going to give this a good coat. Oh yeah, and if you are liking this video, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps my channel. So that would be awesome. So I am just taking this Waverly chalk paint in white and giving it a good coat. Now I'm going to get some beads ready. This bead bundle I got from Walmart and I've had it for a long time now and I seem to never run out but I love having it. Once the white paint dried I got my Mod Podge and I put that on top. The reason being I'm going to write on it with a sharp, sharpie marker and a lot of times sharpies will kind of just go right into that grain and spread out so I didn't want that to happen so the Mod Podge prevents that from happening. Now I took a piece of twine, burned that, put it to the side, got that ready. Now this is dry, so I'm writing on it with my black Sharpie sweater weather and just hand writing it. If you would like to use a your Cricut machine or stickers, you may do that as well or even stencils, but this time I decided to hand write it with my Sharpie. And that is good. See how it didn't bleed out the it worked. It works well. Now I'm taking some Waverly chalk paint in mineral and I'm kind of just going over it. I wanted it to have more of a weathered look so that's why I did that. Now I'm just going to take some twine and I'm taking three of the beads that I pulled out from the Walmart pack and I put it onto right there on the front of this tag. Now at first I was going to wrap it around with that on and then I decided that's not a good idea so I just cut that on the back and I'm just gonna let it hang and then I'll glue the tag to the actual part that I'm wrapping around. It didn't work together as well. So now I just took some twine, wrapped it around a few times and I'm tying a knot. And then I'm going to cut off any excess on those little twine pieces that are hanging out. And before I glue this on, I'm just gonna take some hot glue and put a dab of it right where I would like those beads to sit. I kind of want to shape where I want them to go. I didn't want it to hang over the word weather, so I kind of didn't, wanted it in the middle, off to the side a little bit. Now I'm kind of measuring out where I want it, taking a little hot glue, and I will press this on. I put a little more hot glue to make sure it stays. You can use any type of glue here, and yeah. I just used hot glue, it worked for me. So some ideas, you can take some sticks from outside and put those in, I think that would look really cute. I got some sad sticks right now, that's what I had in my graph. <laughs> it looks so bad, but it would look really cute if you found cute sticks. Then at first I thought I was gonna use these florals, I just liked the color of that flower with, I don't know, with the checks. I really did think I was going to use that. And then I brought it upstairs and I was looking, I was like, yeah, that's a no. So then I saw this. This is from the dollar spot at Target. And I was like, will that fit in there? Look at that. Yeah, it fits right in there. Yep, loved it. And that's it. I hope you like this as much as I do. So the first thing I did was I took this stretched canvas, a six by eight from Dollar Tree, and I'm going to take these sticks. You get a, it's like a strip bag, it's called from Hobby Lobby, and you get, I think they're basswood strips, and they're so easy. You can even cut them with a scissor. It doesn't even need to be a sharp scissor. That's how easily they cut, but I was just using my branch cutter because it was there. So I am just kind of measuring it out how long I need them, and you can see I'm just doing it super simply and then I'm going to cut off any excess. One thing I did realize, do not file these because the ones that are the soft bass, because they are a little different, some are harder than others in that bag, they it did not file or sand down well because it's too soft. So 
make sure you use a scissor to cut off any excess. So now I'm taking my Waverly Antique Wax. If you don't have this, I, you can use just the truffle color, which is a brown and a little water. And I'm going to make a very light stain, even though it looks dark right here, it did lighten up a lot because I took my paper towel and I went over it to wipe off any excess because I didn't want it super dark. And sometimes if you use it straight out of the bottle, the Waverly Antique Wax, it can get really dark. So I do like to water it down a bit. But you can see here, it does, it actually was a really nice color. Then I did all four of them and then I put them to the side. Now this is where I make my pink concoction. So this is, you're seeing where I'm making it here. But I made too much and I didn't want to waste it. So, so then I took some, uh, elephant and some mineral and I put it right inside. Now I'm going to be using this to coat the canvas. I wanted a khaki gray color and I thought this turned out really nice. It almost looks like a, a cement color. So I gave this a really good coat and I made sure I got my edges, even though the basswood will be up against it, I just wanted to make sure that it, nothing showed. So you can see I wrote on the back, sometimes I make these ahead of time because I know that I want to do a project with them and I just write on the back of them what they are, especially if it's white on white, it's hard to see. And I keep it in a little file and that way I always have it to go back to. So I go to the file and say, oh, is there anything in there I wanna do today? So that's a little tip for you, sometimes I do that. And then I am just adhering it on with my scraper and then pulling this off, that worked out super well. And I liked it kind of off to the side in the corner, I liked how that looked. So now I'm going to take my sticks that dried at this point and I am going to start hot gluing them on. Now you can use any type of glue you have and it would work great, but I just wanted to use hot glue because it's quick and yeah, it's quick. And when you're <laughs> crafting and making YouTube videos, you like to be quick because there's a million things to do. Even when you just craft, sometimes you want to get things done quick because you do have a million things to do. I know how we are. We all are the same. <laughs> and then I am just pressing that on. And it stayed really well. You didn't really need any other kind of glue. And I'm not going to be playing around with this. It'll just be sitting on my table. And I just pushed it on and made sure it stayed up against the canvas. And then I'll finish up with the last piece. So the next thing I want to do is put on two feet to kind of stabilize it and so it can sit upright on my shelf. So I used Dollar Tree building blocks and I just hot glued them on the bottom of the back. And I am kind of leaning it back a bit, bit because I think that helps stand it up better. And this is done. I hope you like this as much as I do. Well, I'm all for Christmas, all the happy smiles and the wishes, and I want it all from the lights to the mistletoe. you're missing I will keep you warm as soon as you remove that snow so the first thing I did was I took this plastic DIY ornament from Dollar Tree and this matte Mod Podge. You can get the Mod Podge also at Dollar Tree, but I got this at Walmart. And I wish I had the gloss, but I use matte mostly, so that's why I had this product. I'm putting a good layer on right on top of this plastic ornament, but to be honest, I really wish I would have made a thicker layer, even than the one I did. This way, the salt would stick just a little bit better. The Epsom salt is from Dollar Tree as well. And 
this technique is probably not the best. I am coating it. I just love the way it looks because it's so like, I don't know, like sugary. I love the way it looks. The snow is like glistens. The technique I'm putting it on with is not the best. What I should have done was taken a bowl and just poured a whole bunch of salt in the bowl and just rotated my ornament inside. But I thought I was doing it like I would glitter. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm even pressing it into. There's really nothing even in there. But I thought this was a good idea at the time, but now watching it back, not so much. So I kind of just go around with that. And now I'm taking one of Dollar Tree's glass bowls. Well, it's not really a bowl. What is that? It's like a vase. I'm taking one of the vases and I am coating it with the same matte Mod Podge. Also make sure you make it a little bit of a thicker coat. Once again, my snowman did turn out fine and the ornament did turn out fine with the way I did it but I wish I would have made it a bit of a thicker coat I think the salt would have just stayed a little bit better you would think I would have learned by now and have done the correct technique of the bowl and the salt but no I guess this is more fun <laughs> okay so I'm just pouring it on all over and dumping it back and forth again make sure you save all that salt because there's nothing wrong with it it can go right back in the bag and you can use it for another christmas craft and by the way that dish i'm using is from a very large pumpkin pie we had and i love to keep everything just because i like to reuse it all right so now i'm taking my mod podge spray now this is in the gloss and i'm using it almost like a hairspray to kind of seal in that salt make sure it doesn't come off all right so now i'm taking these socks from the dollar tree you only need one and i am cutting off at the ankle so i am only using the foot part and i'm just putting it right around like a hat and i'm rolling up the the end of it and now i'm taking a dollar tree white pom-pom and putting that right at the top now i'm going to take the ankle part and i'm going to put it right around the neck now i need to keep the head neck open so that didn't work out so i'm going to cut this instead now when i go around i realize that's not kind of how i want it so i make it a little thinner by cutting it right down the middle but now I need to join those two pieces. So I just take my hot glue and just join them just like this. You can tell Todd, <laughs> it's a bad idea again. I don't, I'm not saying that I'm the smartest crafter. I just like to craft. Okay, so now I am going around the neck with the scarf and just tying it just like that. I'm not even putting it in a knot. And I will take some hot glue because I want to make sure it stays there and it doesn't like move up every time I lift the head off and you're going to see why. So now I'm taking some more hot glue and just going right around the edge. You can see what I'm doing here and I'm pulling the scarf just to make sure it's long enough when I tie it in the front. And I'll just go right around. when I get to the front this is where I'm going to just do one loop through and pull it over now you see how it's opening up a bit I'm gonna take my hot glue and kind of seal up that the two hanging pieces so that they don't open up I want them to be more streamlined and thinner right here just kind of rolling it up onto itself. I'm not putting a lot of hot glue because you know what will happen. It'll get stiff and gross, but it turned out perfect just the way this is. And I put a little bit right on the end. And I'm cutting off any extra straggly pieces. And then I just put the head right back on. Now I liked that the hat real low because I was doing more of a um, you know how like a gnome effect where they have the hat low and all you see is the nose? That's what I was going for here. So now I had some buttons. I believe these are from the Dollar Tree as well. I had them for a while though. And I had two red ones. And at first I used hot glue. And then that didn't seem to work. So I went with the Gorilla Glue Gel. And that did work. But you know what? The second one I actually went with hot glue and Gorilla Glue Gel little bit try not to mix them as much but that worked the best and I just kind of held it there and then I did the second one 
you just have to hold it until the glue sets, which is about, I think it says 10 seconds. Okay, so at this point I am just kind of <laughs> messing around, making sure it's exactly how I want it. Now I'm gonna make the nose. So I'm taking a Dollar Tree pool noodle and I just had red and it was good because I wanted it to make an orangey color. So I thought the red was close enough rather than blue and green. So that's what I had at home. And you are just going to make a carrot shape. You can make the nose as big or as little as you would like, but I did kind of a medium size. And when I got it to where I liked it, I am putting it right on a skewer. It's actually one like a nail pusher thing. I'm putting it right on the edge there and I am taking some Waverly chalk paint in yellow and red and making my own orange now after i make this color i realize it it's more i want to say peach and when i was putting it on top of the red i just didn't love how it was turning out but i want to show you that this is how it started so i don't like just want to jump around and say like i had everything perfect because it doesn't work out like that like when i'm crafting it's just like all of you i run into problems and snags and i try to fix them so I just try to show you real life. So I, I'm putting it on and I realize, wow, that's really peachy and it really wasn't the color I'm looking for. So I remembered I ordered some Apple Barrel paints online and yeah. So I took one of these Apple Barrel paints, I think, believe this was, I think it said it, um, jack-o'-lantern orange and this was exactly what I was looking for. So I gave it a good coat and then I am waiting for it to dry. Actually, I should have waited a little longer because when I was putting it on, my fingers were getting all orange, but I did wait for it to dry just a bit. And I'm just taking some regular hot glue and this worked just fine. And I put it right there underneath the nose because I am not putting any eyes on because I wanted it, like I said, to be more like a gnome. Oh my gosh, he's so cute. You can embellish him any way you would like, but I decided to leave him just like this. But you could put any embellishments on his hat or anything. But now, one more thing. So I took one of these Dollar Tree lights, you put it right inside and light him. Oh, how cute is he? Like, I can't even with him. My daughter was like in love with this little guy. I hope you like this as much as I do. Well, I've got news for you. I know you're waiting. Christmas is right. So the first thing I did was I took this Dollar Tree Christmas pick and cut it apart. Now, I used the same plastic ornament that I used for the snowman, it's just a different one. I did it the same exact way, Mod Podge and the Epsom salt, same exact thing. And I am taking that Dollar Tree pick and just cutting it apart and making my own embellishment right at the top. Again, there's no rhyme or reason to this. Whatever you think is pretty, that's what you do. So I cut apart that long needle greenery. You know that is my favorite type of greenery is the long needle one for the holidays. I just love the way it looks. And this was even better, had that snowy effect on it. I love flocking during the holidays. I just love it, it's so pretty. And I even cut apart the berries on it and I am just, gluing it on wherever I see fit. This is a super easy one. And these turn out so pretty to put these on your tree, love them. So there are two types of mini pine cones from the Dollar Tree. You have the snow coated ones and the plain ones, but I went for the snow coated ones just because this whole ornament's very snowy, but I use the plain ones later in another DIY. Look how pretty this is, I love it. So I wasn't sure what I was gonna put on as the hanger, but I actually went for the Dollar Tree uh, 
ribbon that's mesh looking. I just thought it was simple and pretty and just enough. Now I'm just taking these little green pieces. I got these from Joann's last year. They're very sugary. I just love the way they look. And I'm just putting a couple pieces right up at the top just to hold that hanger, that silver part at the top, just to hide that a bit. And a little extra berry right there in the middle. And I hope you like this as much as I do. Making our Christmas memories I've been working so much lately I can barely find the time to sleep Yeah, I spend my time running around Keeping people pleased But this is my favorite holiday It's a chance to start over new Cause I missed you so I'm letting go of everything but you so the first thing I did was I took this Dollar Tree wreath form and I think three of these duster mop heads also from the Dollar Tree and just a little hot glue and you're going to see just how easy this wreath is. That duster mop head literally fits around that like perfectly. Like they were made to go together to make this wreath and you could see how I'm doing it super easy just hot gluing it and forming it right around the wreath and then any place that I thought wasn't as close as I would like I just went back with a little hot glue and just pressed it closed. Isn't that amazing like how it fits on there perfectly? It's made to go on there. It's just so pretty. I love this wreath. Now I am taking my second one and I'm going to do it the same exact way. Just make sure you close it all in on one side and make that your back. And that's the only thing you really need to know here. I'm just forming it around with my hands and wherever it's pulling up a little bit, that's where I put some more hot glue. And it's so fluffy, you don't even see where the lines are. It's pretty great. And just go right around. And I really love these fluffy white wreaths that I see during the holidays. And this was a way for me to make one really cost effectively. This is just so cheap to make and it is so pretty. You would never know you made it with duster mop heads from the Dollar Tree. And now we are on to the last section and you don't even need a whole duster mop head. So cut it off whatever you need and just hot glue that right on. Now, wherever you cut, there will be some fuzzies that come off, but it stayed fine after I glued everything together. And any pieces that are kind of pulling away there, I just cut those. And at this point, you can see some of that fuzz was just coming right off where I had cut it, but it turned out fine in the end. Now I'm picking ribbon. So the first one was this farmhousey one. Then I have more of a glam one, more of a traditional one. And the last one, I don't know. I'm just loving this one. Maybe the most modern one. I don't know. I just love that one. So that's the one I go with. And that is from Joanne Fabrics last year. Again, that... Uh, sugary greens are from Joann's. The green berries are from Dollar Tree. So I use a little bit of all of this and I really wanted a snowy cozy wreath. That's what I was, that was my vision here. Um, so I am just gluing on that the greenery I got from Joann's from last year. And again, I got these huge bunches and they were on sale for like $2.00 and you got so much on that greenery. So sometimes Dollar Tree isn't always the cheapest based on how much you get and sales. And I'm just hot gluing it right on to that fluff. And I will tell you, it hot glued on really nicely and you only needed a little bit for it to stay. And I'm just kind of tucking it in wherever I saw fit. Whenever I do wreaths, there's really no like technique that I can even share with you. I just literally keep tucking until I think, oh, that's good or that's enough. And sometimes I don't even know what I'm going to be adding until I'm doing it. And then I just go find things and 
you know, see what I have. Like at this point, I thought that's all I was going to put on. And then I took my ribbon and I put on and I was like, oh, this doesn't look right. The ribbon's a little thinner than I would have liked. And then I was like, even going to put two ribbons and like double it up. Then I didn't like the way that looked. So I'm like, it needs something else. So I went and got from my stash, these green berries. They're also from the Dollar Tree. And I just put a few on either side, tuck them right in under that ribbon that I already glued down. And I really liked how that looked. And then I'm like, it still needs something more. So then I went and got my Rochester. It's from, oh, I love this. This is my favorite greenery. This is from Walmart. You get it in a big garland. It's the Rochester garland. And you know, I love my long needle greenery. So pretty. So I put a few pieces on either side and that's exactly what it needed. Now, the, the ribbon needed something right in the middle and I didn't know what and I didn't want to put a bow. So I went with a Dollar Tree silver bell. And that was the perfect addition to make this how I wanted. And I just hot glued that right in the middle. This is so pretty. So I love to hang my wreaths from different pieces, like whether it be a wooden board or a picture frame or a mirror or a shutter, something. So I found these shelves from at a yard sale last summer. They were like 25 cents each and they're like shelving for a pantry. I just thought these were perfect to hang all of my wreaths from. So yeah, I love them. And this is done. I hope you like this as much as I do. took this long board that I got from Habitat for Humanity Restore, got it for only a dollar. It's really dirty, but I can clean this up so easily with some just regular water. And I'm just going over and just scrubbing out any of that dirt. Now I'm taking a piece of Dollar Tree sandpaper and just roughing it up a bit. Now that I have all of that dust on there, I'm going to go back over it with that same wet rag and just wipe off any of that dust. And I just kind of waited for it to dry and then kind of went over it with a little towel just to make sure that was dry. Now I'm taking my Smart Vinyl by Cricut and this is 20 feet long and I love it because you can make really long signs using the Cricut Joy. And I was able to make one continuous phrase to put on my decal and then put onto my sign. I know it's hard to see here because it's white on white, but I am now just going through with my weeder and just taking off anything between those letters. Now I'm taking my Cricut transfer tape and I'm going to lay it right on top. But before I do that, I'm just gonna stick it to my table a few times just to take away some of that stickiness so it doesn't, um, so it doesn't like pull up anything or I don't know. I don't like when it's too sticky. So I'm laying it right on top and I will smooth it out. And then I'll take my little scraper and make sure I am adhering all of those letters to it. And you can see as I am pulling it up, the vinyl is coming right with it right onto the transfer tape. You can see I'm just laying out these wooden pieces and I'll tell you more about that in a second, just to kind of get my how I would like to lay everything out. And now I'm just taking that same scraper going over my letters to make sure they're adhering nicely to my wooden board. And now I am just pulling away that transfer tape and you can see the phrase and to all a good night right underneath. Right here, my H was coming up. Just, I'm gonna go right back over that, scrape it down and then I just kind of went off the other way. And I love how it turned out. These little houses are from Dollar General. It was $3 and you got 
four houses, a big tree, and those little trees right there. And I loved this set. I don't think you can beat it for $3. I left them in the natural wood, and I'm just going back with some hot glue and some fix-all glue, which you buy at the Dollar Tree. I love fix-all glue. Some people were asking me about that. It's kind of like E6000, but I think that it's not as strong a smell. I like that, and it, it works just as well for me. Now you can see how I'm spacing this all out. I didn't want it spaced out perfectly. I wanted like little sections, almost like little neighborhoods. And I am just going over to make sure these will stay down. So the fix all will hold it for the long haul and the hot glue will hold it immediately. So that's why I like to mix those glues. Just try not to mix them together and just kind of put it around each other. Now, I really didn't like the star at the top of this, and plus it didn't fit on my board, so I am just taking my, what are those called? Um, <laughs> every time, every time. Um, like branch cutters, let's call it branch cutters. And I'm taking my branch cutters and just cutting off the star and kind of making a point at the top of the tree, super easy. And then whatever um, was left on there, I just kind of take my sandpaper and go right over that. And you can see it fits right on the board now. Now I'm using my fix all right around the edges and then a little hot glue right down the middle. This is the perfect size for a mantle. I love that it takes up my whole mantle space and that's why I wanted a long board. This is it. I hope you like it as much as I do. Go tell it on the mountain Over the hills and far away Go tell it on the mountain That Jesus Christ is born while shepherds kept their watching Over silent flocks by night Behold throughout the heavens They shone a holy light Go tell it on the mountain Over the hills and far away Go tell it so on the So the first thing I did was I took this ribbon that I got from Hobby Lobby a long time ago but you can use whatever ribbon you have on hand. And then I have three tin cans that were from Crushed Tomatoes. So they're like the larger tin cans, but you can use any tin can you have. So I am just measuring them all to be the same size and I need two per can. So since I have three cans, I will need six. So I am just putting a little hot glue right there at the back seam. I'm just pushing it down and now I am going to wrap that ribbon tightly around the can. If you don't do it tightly, it won't look as good. Putting a little more hot glue and then I am pressing that down. That little spatula you see there is from the Dollar Tree and it is super handy. If I can find it, a lot of times I lose it, but I have found it and I will do my best not to lose it. So now I'm going to overlap those um, two ribbons so that it will cover the entire can. And that's okay, that middle seam will get covered by something else. So now I'm just pressing that on. Right there I notice it's not as tight and I will tighten that. I do go back. And now I will just, look at my hands, hot mess. Because those that ribbon has like little holes in it so it was all coming through. This ribbon here is from the Dollar Tree. I had not seen it last year. It could have been there but it was new to my store this year and it really matched perfectly with this ribbon. So I am just hot gluing that right around that center seam so you don't see that. Okay so now this is the last one and I'm just making sure it's as tight as possible. And now I'm just adding some glue to any places that are pulling up a bit. Okay, so now I am going to make a little assembly line and just add all of those center ribbons. Just make sure that you are covering that center seam. I really couldn't believe how much this matched because I did not buy them obviously together. It's like 
two years apart or something. But uh, yeah, they look so pretty together, those two ribbons. Now I'm making my flat bows. So all I do is I just fold it onto itself. You can see how I do it. I'm doing that. And I'm just kind of making them all the same size. And just put a little glue in the middle, bring in both sides and you have a little bit of a flat bow. Now you just take another piece and you are going to just hot glue a little piece right around the middle. And if you've been with my channel a while, you know I love to make these flat bows, especially on my tin cans. And just cutting off any excess. Now I will just hot glue it right in place on the front of the cans. And so easy, so simple, and yeah, I love it. And the last one. Okay, so the next thing I'm doing is I'm taking a Dollar Tree pool noodle and I am just going to cut it to size and, but I make it a little bigger than I have to because I want to make sure it fits in there really tight. And then I push that down and I have three cans, so I need three pieces. Okay, so next I am taking these really large popsicle sticks from Walmart and these are the sizes that I cut them to. So I do two and a quarter, three and a half, four inches, five inches, and six inches. And I need three of each of those. So each tree will have one, two and a quarter, you know, six inch, whatever, blah, 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 blah. And you can see I am just putting it on top of each other. This does not need to be perfect. It is supposed to look rustic. So I am just measuring lightly. <laughs> so I'm just putting it on top of each other and cutting it to match. Again, you need three of each. So you can see here, I'm counting through to make sure I have three of each. All right, so these wooden sticks I got from Amazon and you get so many in the pack and I love them and I cannot wait to use them to like frame pictures and things like that. So I will try to see if I can find that link if they're still selling them and put them, put that below. And you can see I'm just gluing them on and spacing them out a little bit. Again, by eye, this does not need to be perfect. It is supposed to be a fun, rustic piece. So I am not sitting there with a ruler and measuring this all out. If you want to, you can, but I liked it just rustic like this and not perfect. And that one's done. So I'm kind of laying them next to each other. So I have about the same size, you know, like they're the same height, they're starting at the same height. So that's just how, again, how I measured it by eye. And you can see I'm going right up from, I'm starting at the largest at the bottom and working up to the smallest at the top. Now, there is another option. If you want to cut these, I used um, branch cutters. That's what I used. It worked out just fine. If you want to cut these at an angle to make more of a tree shape, you can. And I was thinking about doing that, but at the last minute I kept them rectangular, but you can also cut those if you would like. You can use wood glue, but the hot glue worked fine for me. And here's the last piece. All right, so now I'm using my Waverly Antique Wax and I am going to coat these one coat front and back because you know they're in the cans and you will be able to see the back of them so just make sure you do all sides and even the edging once these are all coated I go back with a paper towel and I try to wipe off any excess you can use any type of towel you have and just wipe that extra off a it will make it quicker to dry and B it will not look as dark and I don't know it just gives the wood a better look in my opinion so that is why I go back and try to wipe some of that off And I even get the stick because you will see some of that. And you can see here I'm getting the edging. I just want to make sure it looks good from all sides.
Now here I am taking Dollar Tree wooden stickers and I'm debating if I want to go with the snowflake or the golden star and I decide to go with the golden star just because it max matches the gold that is in the ribbon below but the snowflakes looked really pretty as well. So I am just putting a little hot glue right on the bottom to feet of the star and putting that right at the top. And I think that looks super cute. So I'm taking this ribbon that I got from burlapfabric.com a while ago. I have had it forever and I love it because it's just really, it really goes with anything. So I use it a lot. I do like it a lot. I like the thickness of it. I like just the material of it and it just looks good with any of my projects. So now I'm just making a simple bow like you do your shoe and you tie a shoelace and I'm just making them all the same size, putting a dollop of hot glue and just putting that bow right at the base of the tree. You can use any type of bow you want or no bow at all. So at this point, I am just taking my craft knife, cutting like a little X in there and then popping that down. And when I say the word pop, I mean pop because when you push it down for some reason, it just makes this huge loud popping sound. Even though you're cutting the top layer, I don't know, it just does. And so I am popping that right down and just kind of straightening them up. So you don't want to cut too big an X with your craft knife just because you want it to stay pretty tight. And just pulling off any hot glue strings and they're all ready to go. So cute. Okay. So the next thing I want to do is I'm going to take this Spanish moss from the Dollar Tree and I really was unsure if I was going to go with this or just regular green like reindeer moss or something but I really liked the natural element of all these colors together so I stuck with that but again you can fill it with with whatever you would like and I am just going around and putting in that um Spanish moss. Now it's great because it also holds the tree straight so it adds a little more tension in there so it just help, holds that really nice. So if you put a bigger piece of foam at the bottom you will need less Spanish moss. I did use a little less than a bag but again you can reuse the moss. Now I got this for $3.48 at Walmart I think last year in the clearance section and I love this sign but I have not used it yet but I'm going to use it as a riser right now and I loved how it looked on there super cute and it just kind of gave it a little base to sit on so I took it upstairs and I was like I don't know I think it needs a little something so I'm taking this Waverly um, hazelnut and I'm going to just put a little bit on the edges just to give those trees some more dimension and they don't look as flat in the end did it make a difference not really <laughs> so I thought it was going to but it looked just as good before so I don't know why I went back and did this I was just looking at it upstairs and I was like maybe I'll add some color on the edging and yeah it looks good either way but you don't really need to do this step And then I go through all three trees like that. Again, you should do this before you put it in the can. It would be much easier. And that's it. I hope you like this as much as I do. So the first thing I did was I went into Cricut Design Space and I'm going to show you how I made my decal for that sign and how I made a ring around it. So I went over where the shapes are and I got a circle 
and then I unlocked it so I can just change the shape of it and I made it into a long oval. Now I made two of them and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make one a little bit bigger and I'm just going to layer it on top of each other and then I'm going to select both of those and I'm going to align it horizontally and vertically and that will make sure it's right in the middle. I'm gonna slice it and you can see I'm just taking all my pieces apart and now I will cut and paste another one or you could just duplicate it and now I have two. I'm making one a little bit bigger than the other one and I'm just going to delete these two right here and you can see I'm just now going to align them vertically and horizontally again so they are perfect together. Now I'm going to type up Christmas and I am going to now type up market in lowercase. Anytime I am going to use a cursive font, I like to put it in lowercase just so it flows better. And now I'm going to write Bromello here. I like that font here. So you can see as I'm making this bigger, it's kind of spaced apart a little bit. So I will show you what I do there. I just changed the Christmas font and now I'm going to curve it. And you can see right here how I'm doing that. Super easy and now I'm just adjusting it to fit and I can see that I need a little bit more of a curve. And now I'm going to adjust the word market. I'm going to ungroup the letters so I can manipulate them and move them where I would like. And you can see I'm just making them all closer together. And then I'm going to group it all as one. Now this is where I made a mistake. I should have welded it and I'll show you later why I should have welded the word market. I'm going to group that all together and I'm going to align it again so that everything is centered. And you can see here, I'm going to just move it down a little bit though. And now I'm deciding between these two wooden signs from Dollar Tree. I was unsure which one I was gonna use, but I figured I could see once I printed out the decal, what it would look like in each one of those, and then I could make my decision then. When I am taking this apart, you'll see that I made the oval, the two oval shapes much skinnier because I liked that look a little more to make it look a little more delicate. So I went back in and I made those a lot skinnier. So now I'm taking the transfer tape. This is from Cricut and I love that it's on a long roll as well. And I'm putting it right over the top and I'm going to press it down with my scraper and that will make sure it's adhered a little better as I'm pulling it up. And there we go. Right here, I'm seeing which one I want to put it on kind of measuring it out in the middle and that's what it looks like on the oval. I liked it, but my son, he's 11, he was like, mom, I really think the other one looks like it would fit for market. And I said, yeah, I, I agree. I feel that shape is a good market shape. So I put it on this wooden piece here from Dollar Tree. And this is from the crafter square section. And I'm just taking off any of that transfer sheet left over and there we go. And you can see that's where I should have welded it. Because of that, the letters weren't completely joined. Even though they look joined, they're not. And there was a little piece that came out. I just went over with my marker and you can see you can't even notice it. But now I'm taking this Joanne fabric greenery. You can use whatever you have. Dollar Tree, whatever. I just want to use up what I have in my house. So I am just hot gluing some of that right around the edges. That already has some pine cones in it and I just love this greenery. But the Dollar Tree does have some really nice greenery out this year as well as Walmart. I know that um, Dollar General has some great greenery out. So anywhere that you have some affordable stuff, definitely go and get that. I'm just going to hot glue this right on the back of this hoop wreath. Oh, and that hoop wreath I bought at Ross for only $2.99. You can buy hoop wreaths at any hobby store or Walmart and they're super inexpensive. Now, this is a tip right here. I love to put different uh, ribbons together to make it look like a larger ribbon. So I took the two greens, hot glued those together, and now I'm trying to find what ribbon I wanna put down the seam. And you can see I went through so many choices, but I end up using 
the black ribbon with the white stitching. So I'm going right down the middle with some hot glue. After I go down the length of the ribbon, I'm gonna do the same thing with a smaller ribbon, and that's gonna hide that seam, but it's also gonna give it more interest. And I love layering ribbons. I know if you've been watching my channel, you know I layer ribbons all the time. I just so love the look of that. So now I am just taking that ribbon and wrapping it right underneath, right through where that sign is, and I'm going to hot glue it onto that wooden piece from the hoop. And you can see I'm, how I'm doing this and I'm just pulling it up. Now I wanted to put something in the center here but I didn't want a big bow. So I was kind of going back and forth with some options. So I'm just kind of gluing it over and I'm putting any leftover greenery I can slide in there to make it nice and full. You can go as far down on that hoop as you want. I just liked the top done. That's just how I wanted it. Now I'm taking these bells. Now these bells I got at a yard sale for a dollar and I just loved how substantial they are and so I bought them. But you can get bells at Dollar Tree, Walmart, anywhere. But these are what I had on hand and that's what I'm using. I'm hot gluing them to the wreath but that I'm also hot gluing them together and that will really hold them in place. You can use an E6000 or anything like that but I was okay with the hot glue. It held just fine for me. Now I'm taking these white berries from Dollar Tree and I'm just kind of putting them in throughout those bells wherever I see fit. And that's it. This is done. I hope you like this as much as I do. First thing I did was I took this wooden snowflake from the Dollar Tree and I am going to give it a good coat of elephant chalk paint by Waverly. It is a nice medium gray and I really love this color. And I only needed to give it one good coat. Normally I would paint the back of these, but I was in a time crunch, so I didn't have time to do it, but it's up to you if you would like to or not. But I figured it's gonna be on my wall, so you will not see it. Actually, I think I'm gonna put it on my door. And I'm getting around the edges to make sure everything's covered. Now I'm taking this Dollar Tree piece ornament, and I am cutting off the hanger and that little greenery. Put that aside, you will use it later. I'm also taking this Dollar Tree ornament snowflake, and I will be using that as well. So I'm going to hot glue that styrofoam snowflake right to the center. One thing I wish I did, I wish I would have seen if that, um, like those sparklies on there would have come off the back because you can kind of see it there. I wish I would have done that, but I didn't. I mean, I guess I could take it off and try it, but I'm okay with that. I could just snip that off, but you can see that because it's not completely even. So now I'm taking the Dollar Tree burlap craft roll and I'm just cutting off a little piece and tying a piece of twine around the center and hot gluing that right at the top of the peace sign with a little Dollar Tree silver bell. Now I'm trying to figure out if I want to kind of glue it over two snowflake arms or one. I do choose the one and I want to cover up that little hole that you use as the hanger because I'm going to use a loop in the back and you can see that right here. So I'm just using a piece of twine and making a loop and a knot and I'm gonna glue it right at the top. So now I'm taking some Waverly chalk paint in white and I am literally dry brushing this as lightly as can be. I just want to, you know, give it a little dimension on the edges. I wish I would have used my chippy brush, but I couldn't I couldn't find it at this point or it was dirty or something, so I didn't, but this worked. It just gets a little heavy-handed at times. And if you do get a little heavy-handed, I am going back with my 
wa uh, Waverly chalk paint an elephant right towards the end because I realized some of that white got a little thick in places right here you can see that's what I'm doing and that just gives me the perfect amount and this is it I hope you like this as much as I do come all ye faithful joyful and triumphant come ye come ye to Bethlehem come The first thing I did was I took this jar from the Dollar Tree and this Waverly chalk paint in moss and because this glass had the raised lines and the indention areas it was really hard to get in there so I gave this a very good coat I waited for it to dry and then I went back and gave it another light coat and I just went around the whole jar on the bottom. I also went around the top and in the inside just a little bit where you could see down in there. Once that dried, both coats, I then went back to distress it or highlight it or whatever you want to call it. I took this silver, you don't need the silver, so that's why I'm not mentioning it much because I don't think it made a difference. And then I took some Waverly chalk paint in white. I blended those together, but again, you can't even notice. It really didn't make a difference. So I am taking my Waverly chalk paint in white and I'm going right around the raised area there. And you can see how that makes those lines stand out just a little bit more. And now I'm going right around the top and a little bit on the inside edge and put that aside to dry. Now that little greenery piece that we ripped off from the piece ornament I'm going to use now. I took off those pine cones that were on there. They're a little plasticky so I wanted more of the real pine cones from Dollar Tree so I will be putting those on. I'm just taking that Waverly chalk paint in white and just giving it a snowy look along with these mini pine cones that you get in the bag from Dollar Tree. I'm just giving those the snow frosted look as well. I'm gonna glue those right on the top. And make sure you hold them there a second because they do take a minute to dry. And I put a little hot glue right on the back just to make sure they stay in place. Now I'm taking this Dollar Tree wooden snowflake and I'm using whatever white is on my brush and I'm just giving it a very super, super, super light coat. And now I'm taking this burnt umber from Apple Barrel Paint and again, a very dry tri chippy brush. I'm going right over it just to give it some dimension. So I wanted the whole base of this to have a very muted look and nothing too strong. And I think that's what I accomplished here. Now I'm taking this ribbon from Hobby Lobby. You get a whole bunch for $9.99. And I like this black and white gingham print. I'm going to tie that around the top of it like two or three times and just do a simple bow as if you're tying your shoes. And then I'm going to cut off any of that excess and I will burn the edges so that the ribbon doesn't fray. Now I am looking how I'm going to add this all on and this is where I'm just going to just start with the wooden snowflake. I'm going to put some hot glue right down the middle and just glue that in place. I put the hanger hole right at the top so I can cover that up with the greenery. And I am just kind of pushing that on, make sure it's good to go. So now I'm going to put this up here and I noticed that those were a little large. So I actually went back with some smaller ones and 
it helped out a lot more. So it looked a little more uniformed. Now I'm just taking some hot glue and just gluing that in place. Yeah, those little mini pine cones, there's bigger ones and smaller ones and medium ones. So yeah, there's different sizes. Now I'm taking these Dollar Tree berry branches, which are beautiful from the Dollar Tree. And I put three or four, I think it was four, four little bunches right inside of there. No, maybe it was three, <laughs> I can't tell. Maybe it was three. And I'm just kind of spreading it out and that is done. I hope you like this as much as I do. this really cool uh, decal that was already made and I thought it was so cute however I wanted it in an oval so this is how I'm gonna do it first thing I did was I went into shapes again got my circle and I unlocked it so I can make it into the oval I wanted and now I will just layer these so that I can align them and I can see how big I want that oval to be so once I align them, I go vertically and horizontally, but then I kind of didn't like where it was placed, so I end up moving it myself anyway, and you can see it's a little low for me, so I moved it up so it would be kind of where I wanted it. And now I'm going to select both of those, and I'm going to slice and just take everything out. And you can see I'm just gonna delete these two, and now I am left with the cutout of the decal inside of the oval the way I wanted it. So now I'm taking this Cricut Joy Smart Vinyl and putting it in my machine, letting it do its work. So now I can just weed it out. So now I'm weeding it the opposite way. Before I would weed out all around the lettering and whatever pictures I have on there, but I am keeping the oval and taking out the lettering and the picture of the deer. And when you weed the opposite way, just be careful that when you're taking out the lettering, you see how I lost that middle of the D? I just had to make sure I had to grab that before I would throw it away with the rest of the scrap vinyl. This canister I got for $3 at a yard sale. Yes, yard sales, yard sales, yard sales. Love them. And it's so cute. It even has a lid that comes off. And now I'm just going to find the center and place this decal right here on this canister. Start in the middle and then work your way out and then just press it smooth. Then I'll just take off the transfer tape and reveal what's underneath. It looks so nice, I really love how this looks. And remember, you could always use removable vinyl, so you could always take this off at the end of the season. So cute. So I'm just taking this Dollar Tree pick and I am going to not glue it on, but I'm going to kind of just put it in this handle area and it's stuck in there really nice and tightly, so I didn't need to glue on here. And now I'm just taking this ribbon that I got from Hobby Lobby last year and I'm just wrapping it right around and I'm gonna glue it to itself, not so much the steel and I'm going to just make a simple bow like you do when you tie your shoes. I didn't want anything too froofy because <laughs> this is reindeer feet and no one puts froofy bows on reindeer feet. <laughs> so now I'm just cutting off the ends of the tails at a diagonal and then I'm just gonna take this simple, simple bow and just hot glue it right to the ribbon that's at the top, right up there. And this is done. I hope you like this as much as I do.
I'm taking this paper mache box from the Dollar Tree, but I only want the lid. And now I'm taking this Waverly chalk paint in Elephant, and I'm going to give this whole lid a good coat. And the reason I'm using this is because I don't have much of my Waverly antique wax, so I'm trying to use that sparingly. So I, I'm okay with having a gray wood look, which I love. And then I will also use the Waverly antique wax on top of this to give it a good wood look. You'll see. So now once that dried, I went it actually wasn't completely dry. You can see it was still damp, but it wasn't wet. And I'm taking my Waverly Antique Wax and I'm going right over on top of that chalk paint elephant Waverly. Well, <laughs> elephant Waverly chalk paint. So I go right around. I don't bother doing the bottom because you won't see that. It is finished enough for me by just being the gray color. So now I'm just taking this chippy brush and going right on top just to make sure that it has some depth and it doesn't look like a flat color. And I'm going all in one direction to give it lines. Now I'm going back with that Waverly chalk paint and plaster and I'm using a chippy brush again and you can see what I'm doing here and that really does give it a wood look. However, I wanted this to have a warmer look than that. Even though that looks really pretty, I wanted that to have a warmer look and I'll show you how I go about that in a minute. So once that dries, I'm gonna take my Waverly Antique Wax and I'm going to take a paper towel and I am going to just lightly go right on top. And you see how all the colors kind of left behind, but that plaster almost gets a warm wood tone to it. And I really, really love how this turned out. Okay, so now I'm just kind of going over this and rubbing in wherever I can just to, I don't know, smooth it out, blend it in, all that good stuff. And when this dries, I love how it turns out. So good. All right, now I'm taking my Epsom salt. You get this at the Dollar Tree. And I only have a little bit left, but it's just the right amount. And I'm pouring this, <laughs> you can see I had some greenery in there, it's okay. And I'm pouring this right into my Dollar Tree vase. You can find those at the Dollar Tree anytime. They're always there. I am taking this Dollar Tree candle, plopping it right inside, and my first thought is I'm gonna take this greenery that I have left over from a piece of garland somewhere. You know, I always like to get my greenery and garland and cut it up, and I first I thought this is what I was gonna do, and I'm going to just kinda shove it on the sides, and I really did like how that looked. I did. But then when I was done, I thought it still needed something. So I wanted to show you this anyway because I did really like how this looked and I thought, well, someone might like this idea. So I left this in the video just as another option. See, I lit the candle, very pretty, okay. But then I was like, eh, I don't know. Yeah, I like it, but let me tie some twine around the bottom. That was my next step. As I'm wrapping it, I'm like, oh, I don't know, yeah at this point I didn't know. This is my process, this is the way I think when I craft. So I don't go into my crafts knowing exactly what I'm doing. I have a roundabout idea of what I would like to do, but it changes. So now I'm just burning off any extra fuzz. And I still thought this was, was gonna be how I left it. But then I'm like, eh, I don't know. Now it needs something to cover up in like that white area because it's a lot of white showing even though I wanted that warmer look. So then I take this piece of greenery from a garland and I was going to tuck that right in. Nope, that did not look good at all. That one was like the worst idea. So then I take my little paintbrush and I'm fishing out all of these green pieces that were in there. And then I cut off that twine and I just take that piece of greenery and I wrap the twine around two times. That's all I did. And I literally just tied a knot. And for some reason, this is exactly how I wanted it. It was very simple, it was very understated, but it just looked so, so pretty. Yeah, I loved this. And then I'm cutting off any excess from the twine. And this is done. I hope you like it as much as I do.
I took this Dollar Tree Believe Galvanized Word and some Waverly chalk paint and ink and I'm giving it a good coat. Now those words come three in a pack. Just use the other two for some different crafts. Now I'm taking these wooden signs from the Dollar Tree. I love them, they're super substantial and they have a good weight to them and they're great for crafting. Now you can see some of those stickers were super easy to get off and others not so much, which is okay because I am just taking a baby wipe and I'm just taking off any extra glue that might be stuck on. And as you can see, I am struggling to get the cap off here. A tip is to use some Vaseline on the end of your glue before you put it away, and you can get the cap off super easy the next time you need to open it. However, I could not find my Vaseline the last time, and you can see it kind of stuck on. So I am mixing the Fix All and some hot glue, but when I say mix, don't mix them together. Just kind of put it around each other. I find if you mix the glues together, they don't work as well. I'm stacking up three of those wooden signs right on top of each other and that is going to create more of a ship lap look along with a big block that I can put the trees onto. So now I'm taking the Waverly chalk paint in white and I will give this a good 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 coat. So very, uh, very thick. I wait for it to dry and I actually go back and I give it another thick coat. The reason being is that that mint green wanted to show through no matter what, which usually the Waverly chalk paint in white usually covers it up. In this case, it really wanted to show through. Now, two reasons I'm doing this. Right here at the bottom, I am putting a Dollar Tree placemat. It's very cushioned, that placemat, and this way it won't scratch my table, and it also gives it a finished look on the bottom. So you need one whole length of it and then a little bit more just so that it fits across. I am so glad I did this because whenever I move this now it actually feels like a very finished piece and it looks like something you would buy and just like when you place it down you can feel that it's cushioned underneath and it won't scratch your table. So I really liked doing this. Now I'm taking some hot glue and that's all I'm doing to put it on but then I just go back and put some hot glue along the edges. Just make sure your edges are down so you cannot see it from the sides or the top. And now I'm just getting the little piece right over here. And now I will just go back and make sure my corners are pushed down as well. Now I'm taking my pencil and I'm going right along the grooves between all of those wood pieces. Now you could see it was super light, but when you take this paper towel and just run it along that pencil mark, it gets a much darker and I loved the way it looked. And it wasn't too dark and it wasn't too light, it was just right. I went around the sides and the back just like that. Now I am marking kind of where my center would be and where I want to put my words because once you put this down, it pretty much adheres pretty quickly. So this is the, wait, what is that? <laughs> the Gorilla Glue Super Glue. Now I really like to use the super glue on these galvanized words because whenever I use the hot glue, for some reason it just does not work. I don't know if it's just me, but I don't know if it just cools off too quick. It just doesn't work. Now you can see I am taking this twisted twine, what do they call that, baker's twine? I got this from Hobby Lobby in a pack of all different black ribbons. I'm sure you've seen me use it many times. And I just tied it around about three times and I'm putting a little knot on the back. You can put it underneath, but I actually liked the way it looked on the back of it. I don't know why, but I just put a tight knot and I'm cutting off any excess. And I love how that looked. It just needed something on the sides and I was kind of like playing with some ideas, but that was my favorite. Now I'm taking these Dollar Tree trees, Dollar Tree trees, and I love these. I do. Now, what's really weird was two, the one pack was very different than the other packs. I don't know if you can notice it in the, in the video, but the, you see the tree in the middle and the tree on the far right. Those were like really full and thick and the other ones were really like stringy looking. I don't know. But it was okay because I liked the mix of different trees and I just hot glued them on. I didn't do like big, small, big, small, big, small. I kind of just did, as you can see, big, small, big, small, small, big. I didn't want it to be like super patterned and I wasn't very worried about keeping it straight as can be. I just, 
I just put them on and I wanted it to look more organic rather than like all measured out. And I just put some hot glue right on the bottom and that held perfect. And that's it. I hope you like this as much as I do. Last year I On the Cricut Joy design space, I made a let it snow, the, the wording let it snow, and I put three snowflakes. And that is all I did, is super easy. And I am just getting that all ready to be transferred over to my sled. That sled I found at a yard sale last summer and I got it for $3. Like you can't beat that and it is so beautiful. And I love, even loved the wood on it. So I didn't even paint it because it was just perfect and rustic. And you can see I'm just weeding out my vinyl right here. That was a little tricky because there were all those little, you know, pieces that are sticking off from those snowflakes, but that's okay. It was easily done and you can see I'm just lining it up. My husband's coming over and helping me get it straight and there. Yeah. So I don't think he did much though. I think he was just, he was just like, yeah, that looks good. That was it. Um, and now I am just making sure it is pressed down so that when I pull it off, it adheres nicely. This DIY is super simple, but I'm just showing you that you can use any decor from yard sales or thrift stores or even in your own basement, finding things you haven't used and you can upcycle them to fit your decor and any holiday season. I just love how this turned out and I love the white against that rustic wood. And I just love the saying. And I am just adhering this on with my little scraper. And now I'm just peeling back the transfer tape. And there you go. Okay, so I'm using this ribbon, which is from, I wanna say Hobby Lobby. Yes, Hobby Lobby last year. And it was like 30 feet long, so I have a lot of it. And I loved it to go with the whole rustic look of that sled and I think it's gonna look really nice together. So what I did was I am making a double bow. I am not the best bow maker. I am not a huge bow person anyway, but I thought a double bow would look really cool in here. So all I did was take two loops, hot glued them together. This is going to be the tails of the bow and I'm just gonna put that right at the bottom. I am going to take my wire from the Dollar Tree and I keep it in a can and that just keeps everything together and I will just wrap it around and tie it up in the back. Now I don't cut off the excess because I'm going to use that to tie around my sled. Reason being if I want to change the bow in an upcoming year to something different I can. If I want to take off the bow and the greenery all together, I can do that as well. So I didn't want to use hot glue and mess up the wooden sled. So I left that wire on the back and I'm just going to tie it around the, the bottom of the sled. You'll see in a minute. So now I'm just putting the center of the bow right around that wire and leaving that come out either side. And now I am just fluffing it up and getting it ready to put on my sled. I think it turned out pretty good for me not making good bows. All right, maybe not the best, but good for me. I'll take it. Okay, so now I'm taking this greenery. This is from Walmart. I love it. It's the Rochester, um, what's that called? The Garland. And I love long needled greenery for like evergreens. Love the look of it. And I'm doing the same thing with the wire. This time I'm just using the green wire so it blends in a little bit better. And I just took three 
what do, should we call them sprigs? Okay, three sprigs, <laughs> three bunches of greenery? Let's call it bunches. Three bunches of greenery, because I don't think it's a sprig. Because that would be more like herbs or something. Okay, I'm just going to take, well, you could say, <laughs> I drive myself crazy when I do these voiceovers. All right, anyway, we're taking those three pieces of greenery and tying it right around that bottom area of this sled. And now I am doing the same thing with the ribbon. I am just twisting that wire right in the back. I'm taking these jewelry pliers and that is my way to tighten it. And I'm just kind of like twisting it around and that is going nowhere until I want it to go somewhere. So that worked out perfect. And next I'm going to take a pine cone from one of the Dollar Tree picks and I'm going to hot glue that right on the greenery but not onto the sled. And I do believe I use a mini pine cone from Dollar Tree as well and put it next to it because I do think I put two on. We'll see when I show you the pictures. And I'm putting a little hot glue right there on the bow to make sure that stays in place as well. And this is done. I hope you like this as much as I do. Tonight I want to celebrate Tonight I want to dream away See the shimmer in the eyes Of every happy Christmas child A merry, merry Christmas I wish you a merry Christmas A merry, merry Christmas So merry Let's have a joyful night We'll keep a candle burning To light the way for the reindeer So the first thing I did was I took these wood planks The square ones from Dollar Tree You get like six in a pack And I think these are wonderful The last time I saw them I got a whole bunch Because it was the only time I ever found them now I'm taking my Waverly Antique Wax and I'm going to use this as a stain. I really like using this as a stain because it dries a lot faster and I really like the look it gives the wood. So I just take a paper towel and I go over what I just brushed on to lighten it up and that will make it dry a little faster as well. And I did all sides of this. I did the back, everything. Now I'm just taking this like cardboard right off of the Dollar Tree ribbon I have here and I'm only using it to make almost like a baby wreath. <laughs> like a little like cardboard wreath. You can see what I'm doing, right? So I'm using that so I can put my bells on there. These are from the Dollar Tree. They are the red mini bells and I think they are so cute and I like the look with the stain. So I'm just using some regular hot glue I probably could have used some fix-all with that, but I just wanted to get this done and hot glue is, well, we know, fast. So I just went right around this ring and put on the rest of those bells. And you see how it makes a perfect circle and you did that without gluing it on and messing up your project. So that's why I do it like this. Now I'm just taking some more hot glue, putting it right around. And the hot glue held fine for me, but again, you could use Fix-All or E6000 or something like that, and that would work awesome too. So I'm just putting that right on. Now, at this point, I realized that I wanted a bow on it. So I am just taking some little pieces of greenery. I believe that's just some greenery I had left over. I have a huge stash of it, and I just put two little sprigs on there. And I'm just like hot gluing that on, using that to stick the hot glue on. And I made a simple bow like you would tie your shoes with this Dollar Tree ribbon. It is that red and black buffalo check with the snowflakes. And that's it. Just pulling off any excess hot glue. And that little O for Noel is done. So now I'm taking my Waverly uh, chalk paint in lacquer. Lacquer, yes. And these are Dollar Tree poster letter stickers. And... I love them because I can use them on so many projects, but I wanted them to be red. So I'm just going over it with the lacquer 
And you notice how I'm going all in one direction. I really liked the way that looked with the red and black together because I thought it would go really nicely with the bow. And if you can see, I think I show you right here, yeah. You can see, like you see the black underneath, but you see like the line striations in it. I just like the way that looked. So I kept it like that. I didn't make it super opaque. I kind of had that see-through look and I loved it. So I'm just kind of sectioning it right in the middle. I use my square from the Dollar Tree. I use this all the time whenever I am placing letters on my projects and it works out perfectly. It just gives me a good straight way to put them. You know what I'm saying. Yeah, I really like using that square. And I am just putting on the N, E, and L and that's it. Okay. So I am just taking my hot glue and now I'm going to join these together and you can see I put the E in the back, the L towards the front, and then I'll put the O towards the front and the N towards the back. I just hot glue that right in place. Again, you can use E6000 or Fix All or any other type of glue like that and that would work just as well. Probably better, <laughs> but hot glue is quick. And the N. And now I'm going to have to figure out how I'm going to stand this up. Now I had a few ideas, but I went with just taking a, uh, it's like a stick pack that I got from Hobby Lobby and there was just a whole bunch of them in there and that's what I use, but you could also use the tumbling blocks from Dollar Tree and just line them up or you could use like a back of an old picture frame, something like that. There's so many ways you could stand this up. I just made an L right with those wood pieces and that worked out just fine. But just make sure you lean it back a little bit so that it stands up and it won't fall forward because the heaviness of the bells. And that is it. I love this one and I hope you like it as much as I do. The first Noel the angel did say was to certain poor shepherds in fields as they lay in fields where they lay keeping their sheep on a cold winter's night that was so Took this round it is eight inches wide so it is the perfect size I think it came from a cake or something it was like the bottom and I always like to wipe them off so that I can use them in my crafts I just took a lid from something and I drew a circle I'm folding it in half and cutting uh, half the circle out of the cardboard it was a little tough to cut so here's another option but oh as I'm watching this like it is so close to my hand <laughs> that is so bad Oh, that goes right through me. Um, so I'm cutting with the craft knife right around there and you can see I got a much cleaner cut. So now I'm gonna take that same craft knife and I'm gonna cut two slits, not all the way through, just a little bit. So you can see here how much I went in and that's what's gonna hold my decorative mesh. Now I saw a YouTuber make like poofs or puffs out of tool and I thought, you know what, I'm gonna try that with my decorative mesh that I got from the Dollar Tree and it's like an icy blue. So I thought this would be really pretty. So I'm shoving it in those little notches that I cut out and I'm putting a little bit on each side. And you can see here, if I fold it, it's kind of tucked in there. So it kind of stays out of the way. But when I first started wrapping the mesh around, it was like getting caught in there. So you can see I just took some tape and I'm taping down the sides so it really stays out of my way. I put the mesh in that box so it doesn't roll all over the place. And you can see I'm just going right around until I have no more mesh left. So I can't even tell you how many times I went around because I started counting and then I was like, oh, I'm done. So I just went till I didn't have any more left. And at that point, I am just going to pull these two pieces that I had tucked off to the side with my tape and I'm going to tie them as tight as I can into a knot. And that's what's gonna hold this whole poof ball together. <laughs> we'll call it a poof ball. And I am taking my scissors and I'm gonna go right in that crease. You see where that crease is? So if that was like a taco, you're gonna go right in the middle of the taco. 
Now, I tried with the scissors. Yeah, that was not working. So I actually had to go in with my super sharp um, fabric scissors. And I'm going to tell you, I hate using it for anything else, even though this is sort of fabric-like, but no, it still has that mesh material and I feel like it's going to dull it out. So I really need to get new um, fabric scissors or just really sharp scissors. I need more scissors, period. So now I am going to make all of the mesh sort of the same size. So I'm going to cut it all down and give it a good haircut and you can see how cute it looks. Now, another option you could do if you don't want to go through all this, you could actually take a Dollar Tree, um, what are those called? <laughs> Um, a bath sponge you know like those bath sponge like you bring in the shower the shower poofs you could use that instead if you didn't want to do all that but I think that looks so cute and almost looks like blue fe feathers I can't with this all right so now I get smarter I take a wooden bead I put it on a skewer and I am painting it white that will be the bodice of the ice fairy and I'm just going to put that to the side to dry. I'm putting it right in a wipe. I love to keep it in a wet wipe. So if I need white again, I can go right back to it and my brush didn't dry out. So now I'm taking another wood bead. It's a little bit smaller. I am putting it on a wired, like raffia wire so that I can keep it, hold it in place. I'm taking a brand new Sharpie because I wanted it super sharp so I can draw the eyes. I just made little flat, flattened U's and I put some eyelashes on it. That's all I did. Now I'm taking some red and white and making a very, very light pink. And I'll just take a little water to make sure that is very, it's not going to be a potent color. I don't want it to be. I just wanted a light color on her cheeks. So I'm going to take a daughter. Now I use these when I craft with my students at school and I got a bunch of them um, off of Amazon one time. I think you got five in a pack, but you can use both ends and you can see all I did was dip it in that pink. I have to turn off the light so you see it better and then just put a dot on each cheek. And if you don't have one of those daughters, you could just use another skewer, anything, even your fingertip and just put a little dot on. I'm taking some hot glue and I'm using it as a base so that that bead doesn't fall down the skewer. I'm actually using that skewer to put inside of the skirt. So that's going to stay put on that bead. So I'm gonna keep it all together. Now I'm putting a little hot glue at the top of that bead and that's what I'm going to attach the head to. And right there, now those are joined together. Just gonna take this little daughter's tool and I'm going around any excess glue is taking off. Now I'm just gonna stick it right here in this styrofoam and let it dry. Now these ornaments um, are from the Dollar Tree. There are the trees. Uh, I just bent it back and forth and I broke them in half. I tried to <laughs> use the cutter and that did not work. I couldn't even get it in there bad idea. But look how easy these just break apart. I just twisted a little and done. Yeah, I got some glitter on me. Did the same thing to the other one, just bent it back and forth and twist a little bit and it comes right apart. Okay, so I wanted to see, what am I going to use this one or the other one? And I kind of like the shape of those better. So I'm going to cut off the stem of the tree. You could use either side or make two ornaments instead of one. And I'm just cutting off the stems. And yeah, I like that better. So now I'm using some of this super glue gel and I'm putting like a piece of cardboard and that's going to hold it together. And then on the other side, I'm putting a lot of hot glue. So I'm using hot glue and that super glue gel just to make sure those wings stay together. I even take a piece and put it on the other side of cardboard to hold them even tighter. I'm taking some hot glue and I'm joining that skirt together just where it kind of was separating due to the way it was tied with the knot and that really did help. You can see it makes it one big puff ball rather than it looking like there's two sections. So just a little hot glue. Now I'm taking this ribbon from the Dollar Tree. It is a mesh light blue, baby blue ribbon. And I'm putting that right to cover up that um, whatever piece of paper or whatever you use. I used a little white piece of cardboard. I wanted to cover that up. So I just used that mesh. What, uh, ribbon. So you can see I'm sticking that skewer right down the middle, 
right into that knot and I just stuck it right down. So I'm going to pull it up a little bit, get my hot glue right in there where I'm going to put the body of the ice fairy and I will push her down in there so she kind of sticks. So I basically used hot glue for this whole thing, except for the wings and the hanger. I used the super glue gel. So now I'm taking the wings and you can see I'm going to put a little hot glue right there on the back of the wings and I'm going to attach it to the back of her body. And I'm just going to hold it there a minute till it dries. Now she still has the skewer coming out of her head. So that is what I'm going to tie this ribbon to to make a bow. You can see it's already tied on there. And now I'm just going to make a bow, wrap it right around there and straighten it out. And then I'm going to cut off the rest of that skewer. So I'm attaching the bow with some hot glue and pushing it down. And here you can see I just cut off the rest of that skewer and now I'm just taking my fingers and a little bit of hot glue to squeeze that bow together so it covers up any of that skewer. The skewer is still under that bow so that's going to hold it in place. So now I'm just cutting off any excess of that ribbon a little bit more on both sides and there we go and that just looks so cute so that's kind of like her ribbon and her hair at the same time so I'm just taking one of these hangers I had it left over from something from the Dollar Tree and I used both glues and I'm just gonna stick it right to the back of her bow and I'm gonna hold it there a second with this metal piece and that will not come apart because that super glue gel is really good now she still has the skewer coming out from the bottom under the dress <laughs> and I need to cut that as well but you can see that it's going to hold everything together keeping that skewer inside I just use my wire cutters and cut that off she is so cute now I'm just fluffing her up and seeing if there's anything else that needs to be adjusted on her and in the back I can see that she still has the card white cardboard showing and I didn't like that so I had like a little leftover piece that I had cut off um, extra of the decorative mesh and I just stuck it to the back and that really covered anything and it just made her dress even more poofy and that's it I hope you like this as much as I do First I took these wooden sticks that I got off of Amazon. You got a hundred in a pack. I love them. So great for anything crafting. They're like a popsicle stick, but thicker. And I am just using some branch cutters to cut these. I'm going to use them as the frame to my Dollar Tree bamboo cutting board. Now the longer pieces, I will need two of those and two shorter pieces. The longer pieces you will see in a second that are nine and a half inches and the shorter pieces will be six and a half inches. Now the way I'm putting them on here's the longer piece and then the shorter piece the way I'm putting them on I'm gonna have to overlap them I'll show you in a second it's because the stuff I'm putting on the plaque are a little larger so I had to figure out a way to fit everything on so now I'm just taking my Waverly antique wax I'm using it as a stain and then wiping off any excess and I love using it as a stain because it dries so much faster I'm taking this Dollar Tree ornament and all I want from it is the truck so I'm just cutting off the Merry Christmas I don't need that anymore and I'm taking some Dollar Tree sandpaper and just sanding off any of that glitter. I don't want it on there. I got most of it off. You can see there's just a couple pieces on there and that's fine. I'm going to rip off the tree. I don't really like the tree. So now I'm just taking some red. I didn't really need to do the bottom. At first I thought I was going to make it red, but then I changed my mind. And now I'm painting over the truck and I keep painting the wrong side. But I do paint over the truck just because the red was really like bright red and I didn't want that. So now I'm just taking a piece of card cardboard and I'm cutting out the shape of a tree. I just freehanded it, it was no big deal, and painting that green. So I'm taking some Waverly uh, chalk paint and elephant and now I'm going over the bumper, what is that called, the axle? What would you call that? No, 
<laughs> not a car person. What's that called? Anyway, tell me in the comments. And I went over all of it because I'm right now, you can see I am making the tires and I'm just using a ribbon spool that is no more. And I'm just cutting out two circles and painting it black, Waverly uh, chalk paint and ink. And you can see now I'm taking some I painted it in elephant and now I want it to be metallic. So I'm using my folk art metallic silver and that will really make that really stand out and look good. I tried to put it on the smaller pieces for the wheels for like the hubcaps and it didn't work. It was too um, shiny and just slid right off. So first I went in with the elephant. I'm gonna let that dry and then I will go back with the metallic paint. Right here I'm using an old nail dryer and that works out perfectly to dry your stuff. I just keep it in my craft room. Next up I have some burnt umber from Apple Barrel Paints and I am just using it as a rust. This truck I want it to look old and beat up so I'm just going through and just rusting it up. So now I'm going back with some red to you know take out some of those splotches that looked a little splotchy to me. And I just keep going back and forth with the two colors. And in the end, I love how it turned out. Right there, it looks still splotchy. Now I'm taking some of that Waverly chalk paint in white, and I have to go over these pieces. Now I painted them, well, I should have say stained them in the antique wax because I wanted it to show through. Even though I go heavy with the white, you can still see it kind of looks like barn wood and that was the look I was going for. I could not leave the frame dark because it was like almost the same color as the cutting board and it just all kind of just blended together. On my Cricut, I made this little decal. It says home for the holidays. I thought it was a really cute saying to do with that red truck. And I actually put like a sweater print with it and I kind of put it right in the middle of the sweater print. And I thought it looked so cute. Yeah, so I just used my Cricut Joy, quickly made this and now I am just putting it on. Now I will tell you it was really hard to keep that on there because the cutting boards were are like like I don't know what's the word I'm looking for too smooth so if you're going to use um vinyl on it make sure you put like Mod Podge or something down first because it was giving me a really hard time to stick on there so now I am just cutting up that tree to make sure it fits good so it looks like it's actually sitting inside the truck so I'm just kind of shaping it and then laying it on top until I get it how I want it laying everything out getting my hot glue putting the wheels on first. So now I'm just putting the tree back on with some hot glue now that it fit good. And I am going to take the hubcaps and put those on next. And just a little hot glue is all you need. Now you can leave your truck like this, but I wanted it to be a very snowy holiday. <laughs> so I'm using my Waverly Antique Wax in white and Here's my problem. I used too big a brush. So you can see it was kind of like going everywhere, but it was it was a really bad snowstorm that day, I think. So I realized it at that point and then I get a much smaller brush, but I didn't want to have to repaint everything. So I kind of just made it really snowy. In the end, I love it because he is driving home for the holidays, even though the snowstorm is so bad. I had a whole story in my head. Okay, so I am just using my Dollar Tree square and that's going to help me keep everything at a 90 degree angle. And that worked out perfectly. And then you can see I'm gonna do the other side and I just line it up, put a little hot glue and I'm going to lay that right down. So what's going to stick to the cutting board are the two sides. The top and bottom are actually going to stick to the actual sides of the frame. Because I couldn't, I didn't have enough room to fit the truck if I would have attached the top and bottom frame to the actual cutting board. I wouldn't have had enough room. So I had to attach it to the sides. That's why I had to like, layer it like that. I'm just using hot glue on both sides, straightening that out, and then putting my truck right there at the bottom. See, it's so cute. Even though it was really snowy, I still loved it. But you don't have to do the snow, you could leave it alone. Next, I am just adding some greenery right here to the corner with some hot glue. And I'm just putting enough on there so that it just gives it some interest and I kind of fill out that entire corner with 
some pieces just from an a piece of like a long garland. I love buying my greenery and garlands because you get so much for the money. Find your garlands on at on sale at Hobby Lobby or Michaels or Joann's. Get your garlands and then you cut them up. It's the best bang for your buck. You can see I'm using the darker red berries. I just like the look of that with the truck. And those are from the Dollar Tree. So I just wanted to show you I was using the darker ones. And then I just put this little bow on here. And this is it. I hope you like it as much as I do. It's white outside And the night is cold Everyone's Lighting candles in their homes Yes, it's Christmas It's a magic time You can feel it in the air That every child got their hearts filled up with joy Yes, it's I Christmas I took this tablecloth that I got on clearance. It was like $4.99. I actually got it for my table. And then when I washed it, I was like, oh no. But I use it for crafting and I love it because it frays so nicely. So I took a little square, put a styrofoam ball in the center. I think you get two in a pack from Dollar Tree. And then I am taking some twine and wrapping it around right there at the top. And I'll put a nice knot in there. Then I'll take my scissors and I will cut off any excess of that fabric at the top. And then I will just use my fingers and fray out the edges. And I love that look. So it's so easy to do. Then I just took some twine and I made a loop out of it and that's gonna be my hanger. So I'm gonna open those folds right there at the top, put some hot glue in there, put a little more hot glue just to make sure it's going to stay. And then I just use my fingers and close up all that fabric around it. And that hanger is not going anywhere. It really adhered nicely. So now I'm just taking this greenery. Again, this came from a big garland. It was like one garland that had all different types of greenery on it. So that was a good find. I got that at Michael's. And I'm using these green berries that were from a Dollar Tree bush that I had forever. And I think they were just some pieces that broke off and I had enough for two ornaments. So I am just gluing those on. And now I'm gonna take some of those tiny pine cones from Dollar Tree, the frosted looking ones, and I put those right at the top. Now, I realized that piece was kind of sticking out a little bit, so I cut off that greenery that was sticking out and I tucked it in a little further. And that's it. But I just love how natural these look and simple, and I just added another pine cone. And then I did the same thing with the other one. I won't show you the whole process of it, but I just wrapped it up, glued all the same stuff on so I had a pair of them. Super easy, this is an easy craft. I like to mix some more difficult crafts with some easier ones for any new crafters out there. And that's it. I hope you like it as much as I do. this galvanized tin planter I got from a yard sale for a dollar and this rubbing alcohol and I'm giving it a good clean just to make sure there are no oils on it and now I'm taking my Waverly chalk paint in plaster now plaster is like a white however it has almost like a cream tinge to it or a khaki tinge to it so it's not a stark white I really like it it's a warm white and it's very very pretty but just know it does have a cream like look to it. So I did the outside, I did the inside just to make sure it's all covered. Now I'm taking these beauty blender 
wedges that I got a million years ago. The last time I used them, they little, literally started disintegrating in my hand. That's how old they are. Obviously, I wouldn't use them for my face, but to paint, they're perfect. So now I am just taking this Craft Smart black paint and I'm going around the edges to make it look like enamel wear. So I'm going right around the whole rim at the top and I'm doing some of the handles and you can see that I will even take my little edge of the sponge and I'm going to kind of like carefully throughout put little, I don't know, as if it's worn away. You'll see what I'm doing here. Just making little black dots, specks, not specks. You don't want to make it look like dots because then it's going to look like, you know, like a Dalmatian. You don't want that. So just put like little right there. See, like little dabs, dabs. That's what I'm looking for, not dots. And then I go right around the bottom because I want the bottom ridge to have the black as well. Now I want to show you here. Now this tag was from a previous project, but it was in white and I wanted to show you it up against the plaster. And this right here, this piece of paper, this is white. You could see the difference in how stark that white is. Now I made this decal on my Cricut Joy. It just says Birchwood Farms Pine Cones. I just thought it was a cute saying. I just made it up and I have it in black. And I thought that would look really cool on this type of planter. Actually, I made the decal first and I thought, what can I put it on? And then I saw the planner and I thought that's going to look really cool. So what I am doing here is cutting around so that I have less sticky to take off my paint. So sometimes that the transfer tape is so sticky that it can take the paint off of whatever you're putting it on. So I try to cut off as much of the transfer tape that I wouldn't need to put on. You know what I'm saying? Like the extra. Yeah. So now I'm just taking my scraper and going right over this and pulling off the um, transfer tape. And you can see how this looks. Oh my gosh. So, so in love with that. Now I'm taking my same plaster and a little paintbrush and I'm going through and anywhere I thought that it got, I don't know, weird or too much, I'm kind of just touching it up and I like to do that. Now I'm taking this, um, <laughs> um, what's it called? It's not, it's a word you use all the time not a swag. Garland? Garland from Michaels. I got this from Michaels 70% off. I love it. And this is done. I hope you like this as much as I do. this very nice wood craft cube from Dollar Tree as well as this wooden block. Now that is from those little drawers from the Dollar Tree and I'm just using the outside piece. Now I'm taking some Waverly chalk paint in white and I am giving both of these blocks a good coat. And just make sure you get all sides. So once the paint dried on these two cubes, I just went back with some Dollar Tree sandpaper and sanded off the edges just to give it more of a distressed look. You don't need to do this if you don't want. Now I'm just finding the best sides of those cubes and I'm taking this Dollar Tree scarf. I will cut off the bottom section because I want to use the fringe and now I'm going to cut that down the middle. So then I will have two pieces. So I'm gonna join them together by just taking another little piece of that scarf, putting those two pieces together with some glue, and then I will take that little extra piece, roll it up, and kind of just join that all together. Cutting off any excess here, and just rolling that up. 
Oh, and I forgot to mention where I was finding the best sides of the cubes together. That is when I glued the two cubes together as well. So I am now going to take where that knot is and that is going to be my starting place of where I'm going to glue down the scarf. And then I'm just going to wrap it right around and just tuck that up through and just kind of fold it over on itself. Put a little hot glue there just to hold that all in place. Now you can see the scarf is a little long on him, but I actually liked that. So you might want to check it if you don't want it to be that long. Um, you might want to check it before you join the two pieces together, but I'm just cutting off some of the extra fringe and I am going to raise that snowman up a bit. So it's okay if it's a little too long, but I still like the way it looks. Now I'm taking those Dollar Tree, what are those called? Like um, little felt ball, are they felt balls? Felt, felt, no, felt balls? <laughs> I think they're felt balls. Now I'm taking one of those extra strings off of that um, scarf and I'm going to put it right over his head because I'm going to be making earmuffs with those, they're not, it's not felt, what are they called? <laughs> um, Fuzz, fuzz ball. No, they're not. Fuzz. Are they fuzzy? <laughs> I don't know. They're from the Dollar Tree. Yeah. So I'm using two of the larger red ones and I'm just hot gluing those on as well. And he's so cute just like this. Now I was debating on what I wanted to do for the nose, but I love a good, I don't know, branch for the nose. I think it's so cute. I'm just making sure it's straight on the bottom. And now I'm just taking a paint marker, you can use a Sharpie, whatever you have, and just making two dots. Now, they are not even, and I love that they are not even, so if you do, if you want the eyes to be perfect, then by all means do so. If you want him to have a mouth, do so, but I loved him just like this. He had his own little personality. Now I'm taking these two buttons. They were from a pack when I, that I got from Dollar Tree a while ago, and I am just hot gluing those on, and I only do two of them because, because of spacing, it just fit the best. And I loved those buttons because they had like little speckles on it. Now I'm taking this uh, ornament from Dollar Tree, and I'm just taking off the part where it says, let it snow. And at first I thought I was gonna use this wooden um, crate from Dollar Tree, and then I decided on the tray looking one. And I'm taking some Waverly chalk paint in Elephant, which is a very dark gray, and I love this color, and I am giving this a good coat, and I'm going to put it aside to dry. Make sure you get all sides. I did not do underneath because I didn't really need to, but I got into those handles just to make sure that's all covered. There you go. And once that dried, I am taking some of these uh, what, how do, like sparkly snowflakes from the Dollar Tree. I think you get six in the bunch and I'm going to put them right there at the bottom on the base. And I'm trying to line up where I want my let it snow before I hot glue it. And if I do it wrong, then I'm gonna have a problem. So I just kind of space everything out where I want it. And now I'm taking that hot glue, putting it right there on the back. If you want something more permanent, you can use some fix all from the Dollar Tree, E6000, something like that. But hot glue worked for me. You can even use wood glue on that. Now I am taking those sparkly snowflakes and I am just hot gluing those right on on either side of the let it snow. They also have those in silver. I had those as well, but I really liked the all white. And now I made two little bows out of, I think it's like kitchen twine from the Dollar Tree, like string. And I'm just putting a dab of hot glue right at the top where those holes are and just putting that little bow right at the top. Now that's just like how you tie your shoe, nothing special. So I want to attach my snowman to the base. And because there's only a small ridge right around, I didn't want to see all that glue, first of all, and I was afraid he wouldn't stick very well. So I just thought those tumbling blocks from Dollar Tree were a good solution. So I'm just hot gluing those all around. The front section, I didn't have enough room for another tumbling block, so I used one of the wooden squares from, or cubes from the Dollar Tree. And now I'm just putting hot glue on all of those pieces that I just put on the inside, and then lining this up and pressing it down. 
and you can see how his scarf is kind of hanging but it looks really cute hanging over and around that base oh my gosh do i love him and this is done i hope you like this as much as i do So the first thing you'll need is this recycled jar and these socks from the Dollar Tree. You only need one of them. It's kind of like a gray, I don't know, gray and black striations. I love it. I just put the sock right around the glass jar and the top of the sock is going to be at the top of the jar. I cut off the foot of the sock and I am now going to hot glue that in place and just put, try to not put too much at the bottom because the jar can be rocky then. So I just made sure I made it as flat as I could and then it was fine. There you go. And now I wanna put a little hot glue at the top to make sure the top of the sock stays in place. So I just pulled that all the way down and I just did a thin line right around the rim of the jar and just pulled up the sock. perfect. So at this point I was deciding what I wanted to put around this sock <laughs> jar and there were so many great options. That little snowflake one, this one's beautiful. I ended up going with this one. Now this is a plaid ribbon from the Dollar Tree and I loved the greens and the red and the cream and the gold. Just loved it all together. Cut a piece and I'm going to wrap that around the middle. And this is where I was a little unsure what I was gonna do next. I love to take you on my journey with me because when I am crafting, I don't know ahead of time exactly what I'm going to do. Like I get have like a gist, an idea, like, oh, I wanna make an arrangement or I wanna do this. So I like to show you like how I'm thinking when I'm crafting. So you could see I'm trying different ribbons around the middle, but then I didn't like how it was covering up the green of that ribbon there so i was like i don't want to do that so i took this wooden sticker from the dollar tree it is a snowflake and i love this sticker and i use hot glue don't use the sticker part because it won't stick even though it's a sticker it just won't stick it's not sticky how many times did i say stick in that sentence okay now i am taking some twine from the dollar tree and i'm burning it you see how fuzzy it was i'm gonna show you the difference now that's why I burn it. Some people ask, why do you burn it? That's why, but just make sure if you don't feel comfortable with it, don't do it. And if you do do it, make sure you have like a bottle of water there just to be safe. Now I'm just wrapping and wrapping it around the top of it, I think three times. And I am letting the two strings hang off and that's where I'm gonna tie my bells. Now, these bells I got from a thrift store for like 60 cents, like a whole bag of them, like not a whole, like a little bag of them. But you can also use the Dollar Tree bells as well. But I chose to use these because they're a little smaller and I liked them because they're more of like, I don't know, like a goldy, silvery, goldy brass type of muted look. I don't know, I like them. So I am just tying knots on those and then cutting off any excess, but I could see some of that where I cut it hanging. So I just take my hot glue, just like put a tiny, tiny bit and just with my fingers molded it together. Couldn't, e couldn't even see anything anymore. It was perfect, just how I wanted it. And there you go. I love how that turned out. So now I have to decide what I wanna fill it with. So I take out my pick from the Dollar Tree because I love this pick. And this green bunch that I got from Joanne Fabrics, this was $6.99, but I probably got it 70% off. I get my greens and florals so cheap from Joanne Fabrics when they're having a sale. And you can see I'm just kind of stuffing in two picks there. And at first, I, you know, I'm just finagling with it and then putting in a couple pine cones that had fallen off. And then I have one extra piece. I got 
this little wooden pick from Dollar General for a dollar and it's like a little red truck with some Christmas trees on the back and I just tuck that right inside. Then I was realizing, oh, I don't really like these holly on here. I just, I don't know. I just didn't like the way it looked with the rest of the arrangement. So I just cut that off real quick. And now I'm just moving things around to where I like it. And I'm adding one more pine cone right there in the front. And I hope you like this as much as I do. So the first thing you'll need are clothespins from the Dollar Tree. I am going to make an eight arm snowflake, so I will need eight clothespins. And now I take them and I'm going to hot glue them together point to point, just like this. So you're basically taking the clothespin and putting it backwards without that little metal piece. So point to point, base to base and I just went through all eight of those clothespins or 16 parts, making eight parts. You know what I mean. Now I am taking my hot glue and I'm going to take four of those, what do I wanna call them, arms? Are they like snowflake arms? Let's call them arms. I'm taking four of the arms and putting them together to make a cross or an X. And you can see how I did that. Just hot glue worked fine for me. You can use something more permanent if you would like. Now I am taking some hot glue, putting it right in one of those crease sections, and I'm going to put another snowflake arm. <laughs> and I do that to all of those open areas. And just go back with the final two snowflake arms. <laughs> I can't with this. Okay, and here's the last one. Now, I was really careful about, you know, keeping the glue clean, but you will cover up the middle section of this. Now, you can paint this at this point if you want, but I didn't want to. I want to keep it a natural look, so I am going to keep it just like this. So, I am taking that burlap why do I keep forgetting the burlap craft roll? And I'm going to cut a little piece off, take a piece of twine, tie it around the middle, and kind of make a little pretend bow out of it. You can knot it if you want, but I didn't want the knot to stick too far off of the ornament. Actually, I think I might use them for the teacher gifts that I give my kids teachers um, just to put on the top of the present, whatever we choose to get them. Or if I get them a gift card, I can just put it with the gift card. So that's that little bag I was telling you about that I got for 60 cents from the thrift store. And I just like them. But I'm showing you here how you can just use some of the Dollar Tree small bells just like that. See how that looks? Now I am taking my twine, threading it right through there and then wrapping it right around the bow. You could hot glue it on, but I liked it just wrapped around like that and knotted it. And now I'm making the piece to hang it with. Now I took the one of the longer spokes and that's where I just hot glued that string right on the back after I made my loop. I'm using my fingers for everything. Bad idea. I didn't really burn myself though. My glue gun doesn't get as hot as my old one did. I used to burn myself like crazy. So I am putting a little hot glue on there, pressing that in place, and I knew it still needed something. So I decided to get my black ribbon out, my check ribbon. Now this bunch here is from Hobby Lobby, and I think it was $9.99, but you know, 40% off not too bad a deal for all that ribbon. And I just took this check or buffalo check, whatever you want to call it, ribbon, and I'm just making a simple bow. Um, I know Dollar Tree has this, but I can't seem to find it. I'm burning my edges just to make sure the ribbon doesn't fray. 
And then I was going to put on just like this. And I'm like, nope, still need something. So I go back to that little stash and I take this one. I'm like, no, too much. So then I go back to the stash and I decide on the plain black. And I just make again a simple bow, cut off any excess. I did burn those. I don't show it, the edges of it. And now I'm just going to hot glue that in place. Now I'm going to take the buffalo check bow and put a dab of hot glue on that. And this is where I double my bows. And that is what I wanted. Is exactly what I wanted. Again, you could paint this while I'm burning that. Probably not the best idea since the whole entire ornament is made of wood. Love it though. So cute. And this is where I make the second one. And both of these are done. I hope you like these as much as I do. So I'm taking this frame I got from Michaels. It's a dollar, but you can use a Dollar Tree box frame like I just showed you. You can use that as well. So at first I, don't ask. I was, <laughs> I'm just gonna apologize now. At first I'm using the water that I was, like had my paintbrushes in. That's what I thought I was gonna use as my stain because I was like, oh, that's like a cool like gray effect. Yeah, that didn't work out. So then I take some more water and I put it on my brush and then I put it inside of my Waverly Antique Wax and it is very watered down, but then I was like, oh, that's a little too watered. So I did go back with a little bit and get a nice light look. So now I'm taking my Waverly Elephant chalk paint and I'm just carefully going around the edges and giving the bottom a good coat and then I will put that to the side to dry so this is a winter bird again this is in my file of Cricut Joy um, decals that I make and then I say oh I should pull that out and try to use it here and you can see I'm just putting it right inside here. This is so easy and quick, but it just turned out so cute. It looks like a little winter cardinal on a winter branch. And I don't know, it just looks cute. I just like how it looks. And then I am just pulling back the transfer tape and this looks so adorable. And you can leave it just like that and you would love it just like that. Then I'm taking my <laughs> my sanding sponge that I made that's from the Dollar Tree but I can't find them anymore so I just took the Dollar Tree sandpaper and I hot glued it to my sanding sponge is that really bad do do crafters do this or is this weird <laughs> and you see I kind of like roughed it up a little bit and I like the way that looked now I realize I do not want to hang it with that twine so I end up cutting that off if you want to hang it by the twine you can leave that on again this is a dollar from the um Michaels and the reason I like this better than the Dollar Tree shadow boxes is because you have to like sand them and paint them and cover them and but I like that the ones at Michaels are already wood so that works out awesome so I'm just taking a piece of greenery that I have from a garland hot gluing that right on the top corner and then I have some white berries from Dollar Tree and I will <laughs> I seriously look like a hot mess when I craft but I'm telling you right now if you all filmed yourself while you're crafting I'm sure you would have some hot mess moments. Please tell me you would because otherwise it's a little embarrassing. So I just use some <laughs> hot glue and I'm just hot gluing those white foam berries in place. And this is done. I hope you like this as much as I do.
So the first thing I did was I took this piece of wood I got from a yard sale for a dollar and the Dollar Tree sanding sponge and I gave it a good sanding just to take some of that varnish off. Then I wiped it with a baby wipe. Now I am taking this nativity scene that I got from Dollar General. I really loved this. There were like six or seven pieces and I got it for three dollars. You can see there are the wise men and some animals. However, I just wanted Joseph, Mary, and Jesus on it. So I put the others aside. Now I am going to take my Waverly chalk paint in white and give this intentionally a very bad coat of paint. I want it to look distressed without actually distressing it. Now I am taking these Dollar Tree letter stickers and I am going to spell out Oh Holy Night. I'm going to put it on the right side and I left the manger there just to see how far over I needed to go. Whenever I want to make my letter straight I like to use the Dollar Tree square. It really helps me keep them where I want them, how I want them, and it's a really good technique. So I just put the letters right at the top of the square. You can see how I'm doing that. And I kind of line the bottom up with those little markings on the square or the ruler part of it. And once I just line it all up on the bottom, you could see how I pressed it down and then I pull the square out from underneath. And again, I'm going to do that with night. You can see I'm pushing the tops down and then just kind of hold my hand all over all the letters while I put pull out the ruler part of it. At this point, I realized I would like the manger to stand out a little more. So I take my Waverly antique wax and I am giving it a light coat of it. <laughs> you can see my makeup sponge is very old and it is just literally falling apart as I wipe the stain on the wood piece. So I just go all over and show you how messy I am when I craft and I'm getting all the edges because there's a lot of like little indentions and little hidey areas. So make sure you get all around there and once it dried, which is pretty fast, that's why I like to use this instead of stain, it dries very quickly. I took my Dollar Tree sanding sponge and I gave it a good sanding, especially on the edges. And it really, really gave this a good dimension because it looked really flat before I did this. And I love how that turned out once I sanded it. So I'm taking my Waverly chalk paint in white and doing a dry brushing right on top of the letters just to make them a little less shiny and perfect since everything else is distressed. And you could see it's a very light coat. I'll show you right here. But it just takes away some of that crisp black. Okay, so now I'm kind of judging where I would like the manger on here and I decide I'm going to see where I want to put the, I don't want to say greenery because it's not greenery, but the embellishments on the bottom before I glue on the wooden piece. So that's kind of where I would like to put those stick to like <laughs> objects from Dollar Tree. I'm just using hot glue and that worked just fine. I lined it up, tried to keep it as straight as I could and there we go. So I'm going to use hot glue for the bottom as well and I'm just putting like a little dollop right at the edges of both sides of those sticks. Those are from the Dollar Tree and I like them. They look really snowy and yeah they kind of like shed a little bit but not too much. Now it the sticks kind of came off a little too far so I'm just trimming them up. I let them stick off a little bit but not too far. Now I'm taking this burlap I don't want to say ribbon, but it's like a burlap roll. And I like it because it looks really um, rustic, the way it kind of frays. So I am taking a piece and tying it in a knot. I decided on the knot rather than the bow, just because it's at the bottom of the piece and I like the way that looked. At first I did um, twine around the middle and then I didn't like that. So then I went for the knot and made it a little bit longer. And I really like how that looks. So I just cut off any excess on the ends and I'm going to hot glue that in 
place. You could see I'm getting my pine cones ready because I really liked that natural element of the pine cones with the rest of the sign. But before then, I'm going to take my Dollar Tree pick. I love this pick because I love this greenery that's on it. I love long needle um, faux greenery. I just like the way that looks. And I'm taking some of the pine cones off of that one and another one. I'm hot gluing that evergreen uh, sprig right there at the top of that knot. And then I will take the pine cones and glue it right on the other side of where the letters are. And I actually added some small ones in as well that were also from the Dollar Tree. Or you can use whatever you have. If you'd like to use berries, you can do that. Whatever you see fit. But I really liked all the natural elements of this. And there we go. And this is done. I hope you like this as much as I do. The first nowhere The angels did say Was to certain poor shepherds In fields as they lay In fields where they lay Keeping their sheep On a cold winter's night That was So I took so this cross from the Dollar Tree. It is the really thick ones and I love it so, so much. And I was waiting to use it for a craft that was special to me. And I picked to do this craft because it was my way of telling all of you that I'm thinking of you. And I know we are going through such a tough time right now. Um, I know most of you know I am a special ed teacher. It's been so hard on my students. And I, it's, you know, just holding everyone together, myself, my kids, my students, my family. It's tough. But I have faith that things will get better and we all need to stick together and love one another and support one another and to be kind to just everyone around us because everyone really does need that right now. I'm just taking this white paint pen and writing have faith right across that cross that I use some Waverly antique wax on and I just want to show you that I goof up a little bit here and you can see I am just starting fresh and that is my message to all of you to just have faith in a fresh start. And this is done. I hope you like this as much as I do. So here we are at the final reveal, my favorite part of the video, because we get to recap everything we just made. And I'm going to ask you which one of these is your favorite, so let's take a look back.
So can you tell me out of these 30 DIYs, which one do you think is my favorite? I had to go with my top three. First off is this glowing snowman. He has such a personality and is so cute. So of course I had to include him. Next up is one of my favorite DIYs ever is this awesome let it snow sled so beautiful and last but not least are these Christmas bells can't believe these were made out of Dollar Tree items and I love that too so tell me in the comments below which of these DIYs is your favorite and are there any that you will be making this holiday season and thank you so much for watching if you made it this far please put a snowman emoji in the comment thanks guys so that's it, that's the end of my video. I hope you liked everything you saw here today and I hope it inspires you to make something of your own. If you have not checked me out at Instagram over at Cat Luna Designs, please do so. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps my channel. And if you haven't subscribed, I would love it if you did. And as always, thanks for watching. Bye. Check me out at Instagram over at Cat Luna Designs. Please do so if you like this video. Swallow your saliva. If you have not checked. So that's it. That's the end of my video. I hope you liked everything you saw here today. And I hope it inspires you to make some... He just flushed the toilet. Great. My battery's dead.